What's up, motherfuckers? Hey, guys. <clears throat> oh, no. What? I have to move the Pikachu thing. The, the session, the super chat thing doesn't look right. <laughs> no. I'm working on it. Just uh, It's doing the thing. I just need a minute. <laughs> I'm only one man. I don't know if I can update it while we're actually live. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can. Sorry, you guys are seeing me knit. This was going to be done by seven. Boom. Boom. Yeah, we jumped in a little bit early, guys. Can everybody hear us? Sound is good. Everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Australia. That's one from Australia. Happy to see we got the audio right away. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Zach took the number one spot. Oh, shit. By a penny. Let's see if it does the announcement. I yeah. love that sound. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. I love how excited you are. You spent like eight hours on this yesterday. I was fucking pissed when I went to bed. Yeah, last you night. were. Yo, I love it. This is so dope. Everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Doing the thing. All right. You want to get into this? We didn't even go live on TikTok. No, we didn't. I've been knitting. Pikachu, we actually read we read your update today. You, you actually, so you're sending us an email tomorrow. We have an email video response from April that we finally recorded for you. So that'll be going live tomorrow. I'm getting so good at this. So many notifications happening. I, don't I know, know what, so much is going I, on. I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, my knitting stuff is being put away. AJ, you have no idea how mad I was. Dude, when I, when I tell you guys that I went to bed last night angry, I was sweating. I keep my house at like 70 degrees and I was sweating. Yeah. Pissed off like a motherfucker when I went to bed last night because I couldn't get that shit to work the way it was supposed to. Okay. I'm here. I am present. Yeah. Do you want to do a little bit of update stuff before we jump into this? Yeah. What are we updating on? Um. So we have... Uh, <clears throat> We Ooh, can I go get my vape real quick? Yes. Can you go get my vape real quick? Because they'll see my butt if I stand up. Damn. Why am I being punished? I can go get it. I just don't want to advertise your goods. Good girl. Mm. Where is it? Uh, charging on the counter by the sink. You called me a good girl. Oh. All right. Okay. So we are, um, we are <coughs> changing names of things. Yes. We because are. there's too much nonsense with the way that we have things laid out right now. Yeah, we honestly never thought it would get this far. No, no, and yeah. we, we named shit as a joke. Yeah, it was definitely a joke. You know, do it, doing the side piece was like a, a ha-ha thing. Right. Because, you know, relationship side piece shit. Yeah. Um. So we are doing... Um. I may have to turn that one off. What is that? What is that? That was a new subscriber. There's a... It, it's a delay, so I'm going to hear it before they are, but there it is. Nope, that's a new one. Oh, are those subscribers? <laughs> hey guys, we hit sixty thousand today. For those of you who are we not did. in Discord, we hit sixty grand. Yeah, we we are closer to a hundred thousand than we are to the zero. I am so excited that YouTube button's coming. Um, so we have um, the sideshow, which was previously just more email reading, is moving into the breakdown, and that is going to be individual books that we read that just basically goes over whatever we want to go over, but it's going to somehow hopefully tie into relationship shit mm -hmm. to keep that beneficial right now. Um, then we also are moving the side piece into conversations with Chris and Peaches. Yes. Or just conversations. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, mm -hmm. but that is a free form discussion so yes. that we can talk about whatever we want because it's not always going to be relationship based. Um,
Oh, patron. So much going. I, I it's I, a lot happening. It is. Yeah. There's a lot going on. I also I also did this. So right now, I just changed it. It's gonna take a second, but this is me. This is me talking. Oh, it's you talking. Yep. Okay. Say hello to the people. Hi, people. That's just you showing. Oh wow, I'm so do, fancy. I'm doing a thing right now. You look and so hot doing the thing. I'm so excited that this shit's starting to work the way that it's supposed to be working. I love that. It, it's just one of those things that like. This should have happened a while ago. Are you finally starting TikTok? I am, yeah. Okay. There's been so much happening. Oh, why is Comcast calling me? I, I have no idea. TikTok. Oh, my sister's in the chat. Oh, she she texted me. I'll I will try to show you how to knit. <laughs> I've knitted on and off for like the last ten years. Yeah. So I had the foundation of it. Now I'm. I'm really actually getting into it because I need a hobby to ground me. Yeah. And right now it's my plants and knitting. Uh, Julie rocks. This is uh, stream elements is a service that allows us to put commands into the chat so that we don't have to type the same shit over and over and over again for everyone. Um, you guys see the fancy little overlays at the top that shows the names of the, the super chats. So every time a new super chat comes in, uh, the latest super chat will change. But the fancy one on the top, you have to outbid. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. Excited so Chris reminds me of a hyper puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to join your TikTok live. Okay. Let me turn my shit all the way down because nobody needs to hear that nonsense. Uh, 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 uh. Peaches. Hey, damn, you're hot. Oh, yeah, that's me. Hmm. How do I join you? I invited you. Yes. Boom. Oh, wait, I probably had to disconnect from the, the Internet. Welcome, guys. Oh, someone said Aloha. Beautiful. Thank you. Did it connect? Am I on there? Um, I just had to disconnect us from disconnect from the Internet. I see you as a voice thing. I don't know. Whatever. All right. So for everybody hopping on on TikTok, we are currently live on our YouTube channel. Number two, be better. We are going over the first apology language tonight, which is expressing regret. Yeah. All right. So at some point, I will be cutting you guys off and we'll be strictly on YouTube. Jenna said, you both look so incredibly happy today. It's mint. I love it. So mint? yeah, mint like oh like mint primo. So I was in the middle of the updates and got completely sidetracked by everything. Yeah, because this is so much going. I feel like I'm in a spaceship right now because I've got like three screens going and yeah. like it's just a it's lot. It's a lot happening. So we're like I said, we're changing the names of the sideshow and the side piece. That's going to evolve into other things. Um, we are looking to pick up one more day a week of studio time where we are doing um, live streams during the day, mm -hmm. and it's either going to be on. What do we say? Tuesdays or fr uh, Fridays? Tuesday or Saturday. Tuesday or Saturdays. Okay. So, yeah. But we are looking to, to implement that relatively soon. And then we have... Um, we talked to Discord, which is kind of what we do every time we want to make a decision because it's nice to get some sort of feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are going to end up doing like random 15 to 20 minute real world style vlogs where we come in the room, turn the camera on and talk shit to the camera for vlogs and we have ideas and then just shut it off. And I think when we pick up that other camera, we should dedicate that camera to that so that memory card stays that way. And I can just pop that card out once a week, transfer the footage, edit it, and then upload them, bam, 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 and be done with it. Okay. That way you don't have to edit it. If it just stays on that one camera on that one card all the time, mm -hmm. it would be good. And with that Manfrotto clamp that I have, the bendy one, yeah. I can literally just clamp it right there. You can walk over, hit a button, sit down, and go. It will make it super easy to do all that shit. So we're just going to talk to a camera? Yeah, real world style. The vlog thing that you were talking about. Unless you want to actually run and gun vlog. No, I don't want to run and gun, gun vlog. I'm just imagining me sitting here for 45 minutes. Why 45 minutes? Because I go on tangents with my thoughts and I get stoned. No. Oh. So there would definitely be a lot there. I'm sure that Discord would enjoy that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Discord, would you enjoy that? Yeah, I'm sure they would. You know, I was thinking of going live randomly after I take concentrate. Yeah. And either answering questions or just pondering. Uh, it's content. Yeah. We could put it on the Reacts channel. 
We could. Oh, that was another fucking steam elements that I forgot to do. Mm. AJ, write that down so that I, I'll remember to do that when we're done. Um, so much. I have chats going on every screen right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot happening. <laughs> Definitely a lot going on. Guys, we also have an announcement coming later in the podcast. I'm not going to get into that right now. I want to let that sit for a little oh, bit yeah. with what we've got going on. If you guys have content that you would like to see us do that is not what we are currently doing and you're in the Discord, please let us know because we are looking to fill other slots. If we do the vlog thing or we do an extra recording on Tuesdays or Saturdays, it's not going to be a scheduled thing. No, it'll be when we feel like it. Right. We'll schedule those episodes. Like if we're going to go live on a Tuesday and we know it, we'll schedule it on Sunday or Monday so we know that we have that time slot. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I don't want to have like a consistent schedule like that because we are far enough ahead right now that we get to fuck around a lot and like life is starting to feel normal again. It really is. That's I think dope. that's why my mood's improved Mine so much. Mine too. Mine too. Well, I mean, you got to think we were... We were recording up upwards of seven to eight hours a day for a while there, and then yeah, editing there were on a top of that. Of days it was ten hours. Yeah, yeah, and that was our life every day. That was a lot. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, do you want to just jump into? We can just jump into it. Yeah. So for those of you in the chat, how many of you actually believe in the love languages and apology languages? Because last week when we went live on TikTok, uh, I saw somebody in the comment section go, you guys actually believe in this shit? <laughs> you know, like... Oh, psychology? Yeah. No, nobody believes in that shit. We're all just dumb as a motherfucker stumbling around in the darkness. Okay. AJ said that's the equivalent to Jamie looked that up for Joe Rogan. AJ, you are the sidekick, bro. If oh I am, if I am Batman, you are he's Robin. Robin. Yeah. I was just going to say he's the Robin to your Batman. Yep. <laughs> wow. I love that for you guys. <laughs> like what a bromance. We're 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 like comic Batman and Robin though, not like mid 90s Val Kilmer with the bat suit that had the nipples on it cuz that would be weird. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What did you did you not watch the Batman movies with uh, Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer. Oh my! George phone's Clooney. On TikTok. Yeah, those those bat suits had nipples on them. You could see them. It was the one with the Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister Freeze. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. There's so much going on. Or we're selling shirts. Yep. Somebody bought one of the ego egos kills talent shirt. There's one triple X shirt left. Yeah. Unless somebody bought both of them. Yeah. No. There's one left. One ego kills talent triple X shirt left. If you guys want that last Ego Kills Talent shirt, it, uh, it is at tobebetter.co, the number two, bebetter.co, if you want the last Ego Kills Talent extra large t-shirt. Apparently, we're having an echo because of TikTok. So I'm going to leave your, your thing. Okay. There you go. That, Jeff Graham messaged me. He was like, hey, you have a really big echo, just so you know. All right, is that better? Should be. Because I'm not on there now making a bunch of noise. All right, I'm seeing it's much better. Yes, fantastic. Welcome, 500 of you. If you want to catch the live, go to To Be Better on YouTube. We are going over the first apology language tonight. Um, let me go in here and do that chat thing real quick while you're doing that. <clears throat> The reason YouTube doesn't hear an echo is because we were live on TikTok and the feeds were interrupting each other. All right, you just want to get into it? Uh, one second. I'm oh. adding something real quick. All right. So while he's doing that, you guys know what to do. Somebody asked a question in there about um, blended families. Can you find that comment? Blended families? Yep. Guys, I apologize. I'm I really feel like a scrub right now not having all this together. It'd be like that though. So as I'm looking, I'm seeing people saying, Would you be upset but if I copied your tattoo? Which tattoo? My the lavender's on my chest and my throat. 
Do you have a problem with that? I don't want my hand on other people's throats. Well, someone said it would be their hubby's throat. Oh, that, or their hubby's hand. Yeah, I don't get that's that's I mean it's flattering yeah. that they're that into that, but don't use my hand. That would be fucking weird. Yeah, I'd be a little salty if it was your hand. Okay, blended family. Blended family. There's too much happening. I'm not finding that. All right. Give me a minute. Ooh, what did I just do to the chat? Oh, Jasmine hit a bingo. She's at the bingo hall right now. Nice. Okay, let's see if this. Ooh, works. Barb's three hundred four. You are over here plugging the YouTube channel. Thank you. Did that work? Boom, shakalaka. Okay, um, somebody asked if we would do an episode about blended, how, how to like blend a family together. I guess two families move in, and I'm assuming with kids. I, I'm assuming that's what that would um, be. You, Multiple children. That would be a really good uh, side piece conversation. But we have done a step parenting episode, haven't we? Yeah. I feel like we've we've recorded that. Step parenting, yes. Not multiple children now living together. Right. Maybe I'm we... not a child psychologist. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Dealing with children and their emotions and identifying them is totally different than it is with adults. Yeah, it really is. And if you guys are both bringing two children to the household, getting them all acclimated with each other, there's going to be issues. There's going to be a disruption in their routine. It's a lot. I hate that this is a thing while we're recording. I feel like such a fucking mess right now, guys. I really apologize. So I'm seeing 276 people watching, but only 12 likes on this video or on this live. Really? That's very abysmal. Oh, 87 likes. Zeke corrected it. Yeah, you're, it may not have updated on yours. Yeah, it's, it's showing 87 on mine. All right, so... Let's just jump into the apology languages because okay. at this point, like I'm, I'm going to continue to get sidetracked. All right. So expressing regret. This is the verbalization of apologies. So it is a verbalization of I'm sorry, accountability and acknowledgement of I see how X, Y, and Z hurt you and I am sorry. That's this love language or apology language. I personally cannot relate to this apology language. Words mean nothing to me. <laughs> I actually agree with that. So showing and uh, expressing regret or remorse is a fundamental key to good relationships. And for those of you who don't know what fundamental means or just don't know the definition off the top of your head, it is forming a necessary base i.e. the foundation of your relationship. And this can apply to anybody. So if you are not capable of expressing regret and taking accountability for your actions that has hurt somebody, there is a crack in every foundation you've laid with every person in your life. Regret focuses on what you did or failed to do and how it impacted your person. When someone receives an apology as expressing regret, they are listening for you to express how you know what you've done or did not do has impacted them. So if the person you are interacting with, their apology language is expressing regret. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a super chat. That was so like sci-fi. I liked that. That was the sound you picked. I know, but you making it. Oh, it's funny. I would like to submit a formal request. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, it was just me for a minute. That's so cool. Are you doing that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking trying to really professionalize this shit over here. I'm so. really impressed. You're doing really good. So if when you, you when you start speaking again, reading your shit, I'm gonna go back to just you. And okay. then I, if I have like a really long tirade that I plan on going on, it'll, it'll go me. You. And then otherwise, we'll just stick like this. You're on it. I'm trying. <laughs> you guys on TikTok, if you want to see what he's doing, you should go check out the YouTube channel. I feel like I need to get Adderall so that I can really yeah. focus because right now it's just not a thing. I feel like a ferret on crystal meth. There's just so much fucking going on right now, but I'm yeah. doing the thing. You're doing great. I don't remember what I was saying. 
How it's the noise, everything that just happened. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. <laughs> okay. So, okay, I remember it's back. If their apology language is having you express remorse, regret, acknowledging what you've done and how you've impacted them, that is what they are listening for. So you can say, yeah, I apologized. But if they didn't hear you directly say, I'm sorry for X, Y, and Z, I know this is how it hurt you. It's not an apology to them. That's where a lot of arguments start. I have a question. Yes. Do you think that people who have that apology uh, blah, 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 apology language mm -hmm. have has the uh, positive affirmation love language? Positive affirmation love language? I would say it correlates. It could. Yeah. Maybe. I only say that because... You and I are the same and that the words don't mean shit. Mm -hmm. I want to see change. I want to see action. You just saying you're sorry to me doesn't mean anything. Right. It's unless, unless you come to me and say, hey, I fucked up. Nobody knows that this happened yet. It happened. I'm letting you know. I'm sorry that I did it. It won't happen again. Whatever. Because that changes the apology from I got caught to let me be honest and tell you what the fuck happened. Right. And it changes the dynamic of what's actually happening in the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people who put the emphasis on the words, I'm sorry, would probably be the same people that need the positive affirmations or words of affirmations in their love language because they have um, uh, a physical attachment or something to speech. Yeah, like words mean, right. have a deeper meaning to them. I would say, yeah. I don't remember where I was going with my point. They're waiting for that. Oh, that's where a lot of arguments can begin. Right. If one of you have not communicated that in order for me to feel like you are sincerely apologizing to me, I need you to hear. I need to hear you take accountability. I need to hear you say that I am sorry or I apologize. Oh, it's so I may have to turn the sound off. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to say that I need you to tell me that you understand what I'm feeling. If you haven't communicated that, there's no way for them to know that that is what they need to do to make amends with you. And if you are watching this and you feel like your apologies never sink in with your partner or your significant other or your mom or your sister, ask them, what do I need to do for you to feel like I am sincerely sorry to you? Make sense? Yep. All right. I love that doom noise. Yeah, I just turned it down. I, and I probably should just turn that one completely off. <laughs> They're going up in pennies. That's hilarious. Um, we're supposed to be interrupting super chats of 50, above fifty dollars. Oh, okay. So I, I'll let you do that. Okay. Uh, Lorraine says, "Hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend." To be a better nation, proud of you too. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Zach said, "You thought." I love it. That's funny. All right, we just getting into it? Yeah. Okay. So without the expression of regret, they do not view it as an apology. How often do you correct the problem without taking accountability and expressing regret? So for this and an example, I thought, you know, taking the trash out. Wife asks the husband, hey, babe, trash is overflowing. Would you mind taking it out? Yeah, babe, I got to give me 10 minutes. 45 minutes goes by. Wife is like, hey, babe, I think you might have forgotten the trash needs to go out. I'm in the middle of cooking. I really need it. Yeah, babe, I got you right now. I'm coming. Another 15 minutes go by. Another reminder. He gets a little huffy, gets up, takes the trash out, throws it away, and that's the end of it. So he corrected the problem, but he did not express the apology. And that's where it could come in of, okay, I feel like you're kind of letting me down a little bit. What the fuck's your problem? It got done. <laughs> Do you really think that's how that conversation would go? <laughs> it's an example. I, I know, but let, let's let's look at that for a minute because that happens. Yeah. So first time you ask, yeah, I got it. 45 mm -hmm. minutes goes by. That's a, that's a significant amount of time, especially if you're cooking. Right. The garbage can gets full fast. Or it could have been I just started cooking and I asked you to preemptively get it ready before I started. And then I get I started cooking and I realized you never took the trash out. So I'm like in there with chicken on my hands. 
can you take the trash out? Yeah, babe, I got you. I'm going to come get it. And then 15 minutes goes by. And then that's when that whole debacle. Right. Him getting huffy mm. or her getting huffy, whoever's job it is to take the trash out. Right. Is creating an unnecessary like stint of conflict in mm-hmm. the kitchen. You want spit in your food? Because that's how you get spit in your food. <laughs> All right. Con- continuing? <clears throat> yep. Onwards. Does your SO say you don't understand even after you said, I understand? Have you had a conversation like that? Where someone has come to you with a grievance and they're saying, you're not understanding how you've hurt me. And you're saying, yes, I do understand how I hurt you. I'm listening to you. What's the problem? Have you had that done to you? Have you done that to somebody? Have you been in that situation? Have I? Yes, I've been speaking to you this whole I time. I thought you were... I, I've got the camera on you right now. Like, I thought you were just talking to the camera and talking to the super chat. No, I'm asking you. I'm, yeah. I'm only half paying attention because I'm trying to turn that fucking ding off on the subscriber thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I have to be real honest right now. I am really, really struggling with this whole fucking ADD, ADHD thing because yeah. there's so much going on that I can't keep up. But I think that I just turned that subscriber bell off. Damn, she sent a $50 super chat and didn't say a fucking word. That's kind of a big dick move right it, there. It kind of was. Yeah. All right. Can you rephrase okay. your... Ask, ask me your question one more time. You have my undivided attention now. I closed out... I closed... <laughs> I closed the shit out. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh... I know this is pure chaos for you. You have no idea how hard this is for me. And I was so excited about this sitting down. I have been waiting all day for this and I can't focus to save my fucking life right now. I can tell you're very overwhelmed. (laughs) That noise kicking off and you making a sound afterwards was just like the cherry on top of the chaos cake. You're doing really good. Okay. I'm not being condescending. I think you're handling this very well. Yeah. I'm sweating. Is it hot in here? (laughs) (laughs) Are you ready? I am. Okay. Does your SO say you're not understanding what I'm saying even after you said I understand or I hear you? Mine doesn't do that. Have you experienced that though? Yes, I have. So... The hang up there could be in whatever is going on. They're coming to you with a grievance. You're not taking the accountability or you're not saying I'm sorry or you're saying I'm sorry. And it's kind of like I'm apologizing to get you to shut up. Mm -hmm. The breakdown there could be. There was no discussion of I hear what I did made you feel this way. I am taking accountability for that. And I am sorry that I did that to you. The sincerity wasn't there. Or the accountability wasn't there. Makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah. There's um. I mean, I really think that, that falls under the invalidating yeah. of things. And, and there are a lot of times where people just want their person to stop complaining. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, the, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, that that, that is really a thing. Like you, you get um. So in choice theory, yeah, because I'm running my second time through that book. Mm-hmm. They talk about um. The it's about to go boom again. Um, they talk about control and the way that um, people flirt and feel connected to people in the beginning of the relationships versus later in the relationships because of the control dramas that happen in the relationship mm-hmm. and the way that people try to control each other. So when you have people who have been together in long relationships, 5, 10, 15 years, you do things you say things to push buttons and try to control the way that your partner behaves because you want things done or you want things to be a certain way. You want them to behave a certain way. In some cases, you just want them to shut up. So you do things to appease them. Mm -hmm. That control is an intimacy killer, which is why everybody is so passionate in the beginning of the relationship because nobody's trying to control them. There's an understanding of you're your own person. Right. Yeah. So when you, when you apply choice theory to the apology that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn it fucking sound off too. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it ride for right now, but I may have to. Tell you, I, I'm. It's. I just want to look and read and see what's going on. You can't tune it out. I can't. That I, sucks. Um, 
<clears throat> anyways, when you apply choice theory to that scenario where the, the significant other is just trying to appease one another, mm-hmm. you, you can realize that that's your doing. Right. It, I mean, it's their fault because they didn't take the trash out right in that scenario. But it is your doing because of the way that you're talking to them or because of the way that you have been talking to them over the course of the last five years. Right. That was it. I'm going back to you. Bam. Okay. (laughs) Another reason that that issue could be having is you're not connecting your action to the cause of their pain verbally. Okay. Self-explanatory. Yep. All right. Scenario number one. Husband goes out for lunch with a female coworker and doesn't tell the wife. What do we call that, ladies and gentlemen? In the chat, what do we call that? Go ahead. Okay. She accepted his apology because he verbalized you would never go out one-on-one with another man. And if you did, I would be deeply hurt by that. I regret what I did. And he said all of that with tears in his eyes. That could have been a really massive blow up argument of you're insecure. It was a public place. It was a 15 minute lunch break. You're overreacting. Instead, he really took a step back and he was like, damn, I can see how that could be perceived as shady. Yeah. And if she did that with some man and I had no idea that that would fuck me up. Right. It's not that you went to lunch with a coworker. It's that you kept a secret. Yeah. You're being deceptive. That, In my eyes, that is the first steps to a, an inappropriate relationship with somebody. I concur. Lorraine, I have to read a super chat because she dropped a $50 super and we, we were talking. To okay. be better nation, I am not a dick. You guys have changed so much for me. Thank you. It, it would be okay if you're a dick sometimes. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. I, I, I've accepted that about myself. So... Yeah. It's not really that big of a deal. You ready to keep going? I am. All right. Oh, man, the chat's going cheating all the way down. (laughs) That was a really good moment for me to look over because there's like 50 comments. Cheating. I love this. All right. It is key that your body language matches the energy of your words. So wait, (laughs) you're saying that your tone inflection and body language matters during communication. It's almost like they should all correlate for it to be sincere. That's insane. Who would have ever thought to, to, to do that? I I really don't know that some, some tattooed freak should get on the internet and make a YouTube channel and start talking about that. I'm just saying. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So. Some ways that people have described that they can tell when their partner is being sincere through body language is he becomes quiet and physical mannerisms change. So if someone really feels bad, they're not going to go about their day laughing and smiling. Right. They're going to reflect on the actions that they did and how it has hurt the person that they supposedly really deeply love. They're not going to go out and drink with their buddies at night. They're going to try to make amends and really sit down and go, okay, I don't want to do this again. How can I fix it in the future? Somebody else said that she makes eye contact and she apologizes. And I have learned that that's actually a thing for you. It is a thing for me. When If you if you and I are in, in conflict, yeah. I, I know that, that you're on the spectrum. And like, especially when you're in an emotional state, it's hard for you to look me in the eye. Mm-hmm. But if you're apologizing to me for anything and you can't look at me, I can't take that. I won't accept it. I just won't. Um there, it, it says something when you make that eye contact, like mm-hmm. you, especially you, because I know that you're going through it. So when you have to force yourself to look at me, when you're really fucking going through it to apologize and know it's sincere, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but you can tell a lot by somebody by their facial expression expressions and again, their body language. So I, yeah. I pay attention to that shit. And then a hug and a kiss afterwards, that physical contact of. I got you. I hear you. I'm sorry. I couldn't imagine giving an apology and not having an intimate moment afterwards. I feel like that is like the seal. Like we're putting this to rest. This is the end of it. After this will not be brought up again. It's resolved. Yeah, it's pretty hard for people. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, when you are, uh, I can't, I guess I can't say for everyone. I know for me, when we, when we resolve our disruptions, mm-hmm. if I am calm, it's easy. It's not a big deal. But when I'm going through it, it, it's very hard for me to be physically like touchy feely. Yeah. I force it and I'm able to do it just like you have to force to look me in the eye to apologize. Um, but that is a thing for me. If I'm frustrated that the touch sensation is too much. Yeah. Overwhelming. Yeah. Overwhelming. Yep. All right. So as everybody already knows, your body speaks louder than your words, especially if they contradict what you're saying. And a couple of examples from the book was he screams, I'm sorry. And his hands are shaking when he does it. That's not a sincere apology. When you are oozing anger and hate towards somebody and you're apologizing, why would anybody accept that? <clears throat> Do you correlate the handshaking with anger? That's what it was in the book. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't writing all of that out. In the book, it said like his face turns red and his eyes are bulging and his hands are shaking. Like it really was anger that he portrayed in the book. Right. So they were actually putting it out there like that in the book. Yeah. I just needed to know because I know that when people get upset, sometimes that happens mm-hmm. um, when you're in uncomfortable situations and you get an adrenaline dump that can happen. Right. So yeah. guys, how am I doing with the camera switches? I'm trying really hard to keep up on this. I know I missed one earlier. I was focused on her while I was talking, but also AJ, when do you want us to kill the TikTok? Cause that's still a thing. Yes, it is still going. How many people are, are watching right now? Almost 530. Yeah, let's let's get them onto YouTube. All right, guys. So I'm getting ready. I'm going to turn this off. Go to YouTube. The number two, Be Better. We are going to be live on there for probably the next hour, hour and a half. I appreciate you guys joining here. Now let's all migrate to the YouTube channel. Bye, guys. Power, power, power. Oh, that was so hard for me. (laughs) Everybody's like, solid. You're doing good. It's great. You're doing a good job. We're proud of you, Chris. And I said all of that while the camera was focused on you. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. Oh, Lord. I feel less exposed now that that TikTok's off. Yeah, that was too much. Yeah. That, that one extra screen was my limit. I feel like I'm more cozy now, like with my more dedicated friend group on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got somebody said they're coming over from TikTok. Hell yeah. I switched. Hello. Oh, damn. Y'all came. Yep. Welcome to TikTok. Welcome TikTok peoples. Love this. While you guys are here, make sure you hit that like button. Sus- I... Subscribe to the channel. It'll show your name on the, the screen. So many of you guys are coming from TikTok, and I'm so stoked about that. Yeah, it's gangster. That actually makes me really happy. Thank you guys for doing that. <laughs> it's not green water. It's lemonade. It's it's crystal light because mm-hmm. I don't like the taste of water. Did you get up and get something to drink? I quickly, I quickly ran over there and grabbed it while you were getting rid of TikTok because the camera was on you and I, uh. nobody could see me do the... Would you like me to get you something to drink? My mouth is really dry. Yeah. Do you want one of those those good ionized water things I got? Yes, please. Ooh, I'm getting a Cam- fancy Camera's water. on you. All right. So once again, he is leaving the room. And as always, take a hit. Holy shit. There's a lot of you from TikTok. Welcome, guys. I love your name, Autumn. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Guys, we have an announcement. We went up com- like 100 viewers. We have an announcement coming in like 25, <coughs> 25 to 30 minutes. So I know that there's a lot of you that just popped in. Hang out. Don't leave yet. I'm actually really excited about that announcement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, camera's on you. They're, they're waiting for you to continue your talking. We're taking hits. I see that. Me and my friends. <laughs> Welcome all. Ooh, Francesca. That's such a pretty name. I would name a Pomeranian Francesca. So fancy and elegant. Yeah. Is that the Pomeranian that you would want to take on walks with a sun hat and glasses? Yeah, my baby carrier. Yes. 
For those of you guys who just jumped in here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Your name will pop up on the screen, kind of like that super chat that just popped up. <clears throat> oh, that water's so good. It is. Um, I found they sell one liter bottles of it on Amazon, and I'm going to oh. order like a pallet of it. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, because I can drink that. I, I put down like four bottles of that shit the other day. You know, I've been using whatever's under the cabinet, the gallons, mm -hmm. filling up my pink cup. It just doesn't. That tastes better than the well water we have, though. Even yeah. with the water softener and all the osmosis, reverse osmosis shit mm -hmm. that we have on, it's just not the same. All right, let's get back into this. All right, back into it. Another body language doesn't equal apology is he won't look up from his video game. Are we really doing this right now? <laughs> I made this note like four days ago. Okay. So I guess it just falls into the theme. I'll let you get through your note. And then if I okay. need to chime in, I will. But so I, this I feel is, like that's a hot button topic right now. This is the last point of body language not matching. And I hear her talk to her friends about us afterwards. I think that's less of a body language thing, but still more of a fucked up morale thing. Yeah, I think the word you're looking for is a problem. Mm. That's a fucking problem. Yeah. You should be keeping your relationship drama unless mm. it's abusive and you're trying to exit. It's the two-hand circle. You need to keep that shit by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you, between the two of you. The moment you start doing that, the moment you start allowing outside influences to dictate the way that your conversations go in the house, you're going to allow somebody else's argument to influence your own. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. You're going to let their filter that they see through life in affect yours. That's part of the never splitting the difference that I got going on. He talks about a, you see the world through a filter <clears throat> that you have made from experiences and witnesses that you've had, witnessing that you've had. So when somebody else is telling you their perception through their filter, all of our filters are not correct when correlating to reality. So you are having your own irrational thought process and then adding your best friend's irrational thought process on top of that. And then your mom's and then your sister's. Right. And the reality is nowhere to be seen. And you're bringing all of this back into the argument. For those of you who want to Google that, it's called cognitive bias. Yes, and cognitive that, bias. That comes from an FBI um, negotiator. Chris Voss. Chris Voss. And the book has never split the difference. Do you want to talk about that a little bit since we're doing those on Wednesdays now? Yeah, I'm actually really excited about that. My notes are really good. Did you see that? Holy shit, Lorraine. Is that for plants? That's, yeah. I mean, that's yours, babe. Stop. <laughs> Holy shit. We're going to have to rig up. We're going to have to rig up some sort of chime so that when you open the back door, Guns and Roses, welcome to the jungle plays as you walk out onto the back porch. I would love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you want to read that super chat? Because it's over 50 bucks. I, yes, I am flabbergasted. Okay, enjoy buying. Oh, uh, hold on. You are flabbergasted. I am. Enjoy plant buying. Thank you guys for being in our life. Hashtag to be better nation. Welcome to the best podcast. How relationship improve. Realize you may be the problem. To the newbies. Okay, Zeke, I'm done. <laughs> Holy shit. He said she popped off after I let her win. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> oh my god do you, do you want to talk about that video game thing at all or do you want to just um, stick to the love languages you want to do it afterwards you want okay. to make a note and do it after so i, I want to talk about the Could, wednesday things that we're doing okay oh that's what we we're supposed to be doing yes so <laughs> y'all are wild in there holy shit mm -hmm. so wednesdays we are going to start doing book breakdowns and right now we're doing Never Split the Difference. And this book is absolutely insane when it comes to triggering thought processes for me. I am so excited to do this. And I figured out that I am going to be reading the highlighted passages that I have from that book. And that's going to avoid the copyright because I'm not reading it cover to cover. It is educational purposes. I think is what it falls under for copyright. Um, I think it's... Um there's actually a term for it, but mm -hmm. because we are reviewing the book and we're not reading it from cover to cover and we're doing it the way that we're doing it, it actually um, makes it so that it's like a, a share use kind of thing. I, I don't, AJ explained it to me. We're good as long as we're not, you know, reading from cover to cover. Okay, dope. 
So I'm going to be reading my highlighted points. And then I'm going to be reading the thought that grew from that highlighted point. And some of it's really fucking off base. I can already see you're going to be like, how did you think of that? Well, I, I read that book. Yeah. Um, I actually, I read that book like two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I did it because I wanted to be a better communicator and learning how to read body language and learning situations because I was trying to make bigger moves. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to do deals with people who were way out of my fucking league. So I was trying to get any leg up I could get. The fact that you're reading that book now and turning it into a relationship scenario um, changes my entire perspective on the book. And it really just goes to show that all communication can go towards relationships. It, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. You really can find a way to apply that to every scenario. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be happening on Wednesdays. We're doing chapter two. We're recording it some point this week. Yeah. But I am very excited about that. After that, we are going to be doing uh, choice theory, which I'm also excited about. Are we going to actually are we going to actually do a breakdown of that? Yeah. OK. I have about six or seven books right now picked out for book breakdowns. Choice theory will be a good one. Yeah. All right. I'm going to um, Ooh, before we do that, Tiffany, we do have merch. Yeah, we do. The number to be better. Wait, dot co. hold on. Watch this. Oh, Tiffany, watch for the chat. Boom. Boom. Um, I turned the Julie. I, I'm not going to read your super chat because it was literally just you asking us to turn down the super chat. Boom. I just turned it off. It should should not do it anymore. We should still get them, but it shouldn't make noises. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this next one pops up. I'm not seeing anything happening. So I just saw a new subscriber. Yep. Amen. Bono. I hope I said that right. Thank you for subscribing. Dope. Okay, I turned it off. So you guys shouldn't hear this. The I am anymore. so sorry. Did Lorraine do a four hundred and fifty dollars super chat? No, that's she's she's like the top dick right now in super chats. That total. That's is, how much she's done total. That's how much she's given tonight. Holy shit, Lorraine! And she just did it again. Said reaching my limit. Appreciate you both. Keep showing the aggressive passion. Screw the haters. Yep. Wow, I'm speechless. I am as well. Right. I, uh, you guys doing that literally keeps this podcast going. Yeah. That's insane. Okay. <laughs> Zeke said, don't screw the haters <laughs> and let's fly. All right, let's get back into the book. Okay. So when you apologize to somebody whose apology language, where they need to feel a sincere apology is expressing regret, your apology has to be specific. So I am sorry for... Killing your goldfish while you're on vacation. Damn, why'd you have to kill my goldfish? <laughs> That's the only thing that came to my mind. When you are specific, you are communicating, you truly understand how much you have hurt them. So when I apologize to you, nine times out of ten, I'm apologizing for something I think is massive, but is really minuscule to you. But I am always very overly wordy with my apologies and I'm very specific with my apologies even though that's not your apology language I just want it out there so you know everything that's going on in my mind I think that's important though when yeah. you say you're sorry to someone and you can't articulate why you're sorry you're not sorry mm -hmm. you're feeling guilt and that's why you're apologizing it's yeah. not the same thing if you can't say exactly what you're apologizing for I don't want to hear it right <clears throat> so an example Showing up late. You guys were meeting somewhere. You're 35 minutes late. An apology should look like, I'm sorry I'm late. I know that you left your house on time to be here. You made the time for this and you've been waiting on me. I have no idea how this impacts your schedule after this. I could have just completely fucked up your day. And it's all because I didn't leave on time. And I'm sorry. You want to say anything? You're looking at me like... I, I, well, I was I was debating on whether or not I wanted to actually switch the camera back to me to have okay. this conversation, but I'm going to just throw that out there for anybody in the chat who gets tattooed. If you're one of those people that shows up late with a no-call, no-show and shows up 30 minutes late for your appointment and then gets mad at your tattoo artist because they're like, hey, I had an appointment after you and you just fucked up my entire day, that example that you just gave is exactly why we act like that. Oh, yeah. That's all. I just wanted to... 
Okay. <clears throat> Shout out to my tattoo artists. <laughs> All right. An apology never includes a but. Unless and, I'm and, throwing it back. And why is that? Oh. Why why don't we include butts and in apologies? Your apology. Oh, that's nothing to do with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I flustered myself. Uh, yeah, I, I heard you say that. I, I heard what you said. I just didn't let you get to me this time. <laughs> was that hard for you? Yeah, it was. Okay, thank you. I needed to know that because that was very good. I thought that was a really good. It was. It was. That was like a baseball slide. Now. <laughs> So the reason you never include a but in an apology is because it negates everything you just said. So if you say, I'm sorry that I yelled at you, but you just shouldn't yell at me like that. You're not apologizing. You're placing blame on that person. Right. Even if that person did yell at you, you made the active choice to yell back at them. That you should apologize for, for letting yourself slip up just because you were angry. Even if you don't get an apology back from them, what kind of person are you if you don't apologize? I think we should do choice theory as the next run of Thursday night videos. Okay. Because so much of this ties into choice theory. Mm -hmm. And um, you're on it. I'm on it? You're on it. Yeah. You realize that you're picking up, you've picked up a lot from the audiobooks mm -hmm. subconsciously. You may not like realize that you're like retaining it, but you've hit a lot of points that were your points that were not in that book. That is choice theory specific. Hmm. And if you would have actually retained all of that, you would have been able to go on tirades and it would have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're picking up enough of it to make the point of choice theory, but not enough to explain the hows and whys of it. And I'm over here like <gasps> waiting for you to like <laughs> jump in and do it. Such good information in those books. I'm actually really <clears> excited <throat> to do that book. Yeah. Can I can I pause you for just one minute? I, yeah. I saw some I saw something in the chat. I'm gonna go to both of us for a minute. Okay. Um, I saw something in the chat um, where somebody said that I am financially strapped or something like that, and I can't support these two the way that they are doing it with the the super chats. I just want to clarify the super chats and the Patreon and the Discord and the things that you do for us buying our merch financially supporting us does a lot for the channel. But the best thing that you can do to help us grow is to share our content with people that you think are going to find value in it. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress that enough. If you put this in the hands of 10 people, we may gain two new followers. And if they do the same thing, the growth just continues and con continues. Without the growth, none of this would be possible. Right. So even if you can't afford to give us donations, that's fine. The mm -hmm. fact that you're fucking here and supporting us in the super chat and, and like talking and hitting the like button and the notification bell and subscribing to the channel, you're fucking doing something. Mm -hmm. Share it to your Facebook page. Send it to your mama. Send it to your ex-boyfriend who needs to learn some fucking lessons. Send it to your ex who's a, a narcissist. Send Ooh. it to somebody and it pisses them off and they just share it to hate on us. Yeah, right. Fuck it. Let's run that shit. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to you, babe. Okay. Ooh, I felt like a news anchor. That was nice. Here, I like that little exchange. Let's do it like this. Okay. And back to you, babe. Thanks, babe. <laughs> We're fucking so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. What is wrong with us? That was hilarious. Are you slobbering over there? Yeah, a little bit. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you have to call that out? Because <laughs> that's funny. It's okay, okay if you drool. I have that effect on you. You really do, though. So an example is, I'm sorry I hurt you by yelling at you and calling you a shitty husband, but you know I like my towels folded my way. That was a good example. I should have just read that. <laughs> 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 did you have something you wanted to say after that not one? on the towel thing we, okay. we've exhausted that one so your apology means absolutely nothing when you blame your actions on the person whomever significant other mom sister cousin right co-worker or you make an excuse you just have to own your shit so an example of an apology would be, I'm sorry I yelled at you. 
It's very frustrating for me to repeat myself to you. I will work on my anger and I would appreciate if you worked on the way that you spoke to me. Do you guys hear that? Do you hear how fucking like articulated that was? If you talk to your person like that Mm -hmm. and that calm tone and you lay things out like that, that's going to change the entire narrative of your argument. Yeah. Because you're no longer being hostile. It's not Mm -hmm. about being a fuck you or I can't believe you did that. It really is sincere. Mm -hmm. I I didn't mean to raise my voice at you. I don't want to be like that. Yeah. And and just the the rest of the way that you said that, Mm -hmm. that eliminates so much conflict in an argument. It, It takes things from an argument or a conflict back to a conversation where things can actually get resolved. Because as we've said, you're not resolving shit in conflict. Right. And that that didn't come from the book. That came out of my brain. Mm-hmm. That is how we speak to each other. It is. Maybe we should write a book. Maybe. I can just post my notes in a book. Would you guys would you guys want my notes? <laughs> would that be a thing? You look like you're doing something. Um, I no, I'm not. Okay. Fucking Zeke. I see that Mother Nature comment. That's hilarious. All right. Stop, okay. Stop looking at the chat. I'm done. P- pay attention. An expression of regret should not be an attempt to manipulate the other person into reciprocating. You need to read that again. Pay attention, I, everyone. I'm going to repeat that, and I am going to ask you to leave the room once again because I need the book and I forgot to grab it. I'll grab the book while you reread that. Thank you so much. I like watching you walk away in those basketball shorts. Oh my God. He he showed me his butt, guys. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be reading this. He, it's like a perfect apple. It's just... Okay. An expression of regret should not be an attempt to manipulate the other person into reciprocating. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. So, for those of you who are wondering what book this is, this is it. Five Apology Languages by Gary Chapman. And this one also includes Jennifer Thomas. So, I made a little note in here to read a piece from page 27. And it's because I strongly disagree with what they wrote in this part. Okay. Go to both of us then. Okay. Natalie and George have been dating for two years and are going through some rough waters. She said, George has at times said he was sorry, but then he expects me to say it back, even if I don't feel like I should have because he was the cause of the fight in the first place. That just doesn't work for me. I want him to say he's sorry and not expect anything in return. That would mean he is truly sorry. So I can understand wanting to receive an apology and them not expecting anything in return immediately, right? To say that even if I don't feel like I should have to because he started it, If your partner or your significant other, your wife, your husband, whomever, sister, brother, mom comes to you and starts an argument and you act out of turn or you speak out the side of your neck, I don't care what they said to cause it. You stepped out of line. Even if they don't apologize to you, you need to apologize for your actions. I want to piggyback on that for a minute. That, that, can you, can you read that statement again? And I'm going to pause you right where I need you to pause. This one? Yeah. Okay. Natalie and George have been dating for two years and are going through some rough waters. She said, George has at times said he was sorry, but then he expects me to say it back, even if I don't feel like I should, because he was the cause of the fight in the first place. Okay, pause. One, Natalie's a bitch. Yes. Two, and I mean that, mm-hmm. she that, that mind state that I'm holier than you because I didn't fuck up is a yeah. bitch mindset. I don't like that. So Me I don't mean that like as in she's a bitch. I mean like her that demeanor process. and that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the idea of having somebody apologize to me and me go, yeah, okay, cool. And walking away mm-hmm. is going to leave them in a, a set of like bitterness and animosity and guilt. Like there's not going to be resolution on their side of things. Right. Maybe he doesn't need an apology, Mm -hmm. but recognition of that apology. Like, Hey, I appreciate you apologizing. I'm glad that we were able to work this out. You know, I I feel a little bit better now. 
something that's going to put the conversation back to a positive standpoint Mm -hmm. is going to be so much more beneficial than just ending the conversation once he's apologized because you feel he doesn't deserve anything more than that. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. So that was that. Putting the book away. All right. Just something to think about. When you bump into a stranger in public, you apologize because you recognize you've inconvenienced them. So you are willing to apologize to a complete stranger, not because you're obligated to, but because you recognize that you just invaded their personal space. Period. You apologize. Where is that energy when it comes to the people in your life? When you inconvenience somebody in your life by being 45 minutes late or forgetting to take the trash out and it's been an hour and a half, why wouldn't you apologize for those things? Because you think that because we're family, they just need to accept you or they need to get over it or they need to know better by now. I can see you want to say something. Is that rhetorical or do you really want me to answer that? You can answer that. That comes down to ownership. Mm-hmm. That That's exactly what we've talked about in the past where when you marry somebody or you have a child, you feel like you have ownership over them. Right. And take the trash out is becomes different than, hey, can you grab the trash real quick? I'm about to start cooking. Mm-hmm. Because you start making demands. Instead of requests, love makes requests, not demands. Right. That ownership is a problem. And this falls back into what I was talking about earlier, where two people that have been in a relationship for a long time treat people outside of their relationship differently because they're not trying to control each other. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is going to be my last little bullet points. Okay. Apologizing to get your partner to shut up or to stop them from continuing to confront about the same situation is not an apology. That is almost a form of manipulation to appease them in the moment so you can carry on doing whatever you're doing and you don't have to listen to them at the time, at that time. That's not going to ever be a um, a situation where there's going to be conflict resolution or change. No. When you appease somebody, you have no intention of changing your behavior. Right. So examples of the power of I'm sorry, and they gave like testaments, testament, testimony, testimony of a bunch of people in the book about how the verbalization (coughs) of I'm sorry has helped their marriage. And I only wrote down two of them because I'm not doing all of that. Okay. So husband made comments about the wife's weight in front of his friends. He apologized later saying, I know that was uncomfortable for you. And that I created a hurtful situation for you with my words. And I'm sorry that I did that. That won't happen again. Because he took ownership and recognized that he embarrassed her in front of his friends and then said, I'm sorry. All of that encompassed a good apology for her. Yeah, I actually would. I would agree with that, too. Yeah. Really fucked up that he did that. Right. Did that did that say that he apologized before she said something or did he recognize it? And then as soon as they left, apologized. He recognized as they left. The, OK, so then she didn't say anything. Right. So what the way I in my head, the mm-hmm. way I view that whole thing is that he realized that she was faking it the rest of the evening. Yeah. Was probably very hurt and embarrassed and was just getting through the night and was probably getting ready to unload on him. And the moment he walked outside, he corrected himself. And that situation, an apology publicly, mm-hmm. would have been the fucking move. Yeah, would have. The been. moment he realized he embarrassed her in front of everyone, he should have been like, "Excuse me, everybody," and then looked at his woman in front of everyone and be like, "Babe, I realized that 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 was really fucking inappropriate, and I hurt mm-hmm. your feelings or embarrassed you, and I don't want to do that to you." Yeah. And I'm sorry. And then look at everybody else in the room and be like, "And I'm sorry that I fucking did that in front of you guys. I don't want to be that person." That acknowledgement in front of everyone would have done a whole lot more than the apology after the fact on the fucking way home. Not only would that solidify things in your relationship and make you guys stronger, that's going to set an example for everybody else in that room. Yep. 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 I would do the same thing. If I did something to embarrass you in public, I would take a moment and apologize in front of everybody. No. You know, they're going to talk about that shit when y'all leave. I'm sure. Well, you know, they're going to talk about that anyways. Yeah. Can you believe he called her fat in front of all of her friends? Right. That that gossip, that fucking negative Nancy nonsense is going to spread like wildfire. Mm-hmm. The apology that happened afterward would have been the follow up conversation and it would have it would have shut down all that gossip and shit. Right. Yep. Yep. And another example, I abbreviated the hell out of this. So I'm going to read it and then elaborate. He came home late and apologized for disappointing me. So in this scenario, the husband was out at a um, 
work party. He said he'd be home by 1030, didn't get home until 1 a.m. She was in bed. He came home and immediately started apologizing and said, I lost track of time. I looked down at my phone. It was nine o'clock. And then I looked down at it again. It was 12 o'clock. You know, I had to find somebody to give me a ride home because I was a little bit too intoxicated. I recognize that I disappointed you as your husband tonight, and I'm sorry. All of that encompassed a good apology for her because he acknowledged what he did. He acknowledged that he failed to pay attention to the time. He drank too much. He knew his limit. I mean, he didn't drive home, so that's a good thing. Right. And then he acknowledged the fact that he disappointed her as his as her husband. So it really is all about taking accountability, acknowledging what you've done, expressing that you hear their hurt. So if they say, I'm sad because you did this, I hear you are sad because I did this to you. Right. Verbal apologizing. Are, are we done with the? Yes. That's okay. It. So I, I have an announcement that I want to make now that you guys have made it through this book. Um, we have gotten some things. We got some things, guys. Yeah. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, that looks so good. We have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is here. The t-shirts, Love Is Not Enough, is on the website. Should be live right now. Um, and they can hit the stream elements thing to put the website up on the, the thing there. Um, so with that being said, uh, let me get AJ to send those super chats over. Yep. There's definitely a delay. Yeah, a little bit of a delay. Okay, so um we 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 are really trying to expand this thing. And the idea of doing the Thursday night live streams where we're doing these um book readings gives us a way to help people with our own opinions and thoughts and the prime example of that is what just happened with what we were reading there. Mm -hmm. Um that Oh, I was like what the hell is going on? It's AJ sending me supers. Oh. Um, that that scenario where they were at the party and that embarrassment happened, mm -hmm. it, the dude gave a, a proper apology. The chick felt okay with it. She was good with it. Yeah. But there's still a way to level up and be better in that scenario. We found a way to explain it, so we did. You look at that and then look at the second scenario where dude came home late. Mm -hmm. and, and like, how does that even happen nowadays? With the, with the, the way technology is, how do you know... Or how do you forego that communication? Right. People touch their phone more than their partner. Correct. So for you to be out at nine o'clock and looking at your phone and not looking at your phone again until midnight, I don't believe that to be the case. Mm -hmm. How many times have you picked up your phone and habitually opened something while you were trying to like DoorDash food or constantly like earlier today? I'm like, babe, did you make that Instagram post yet? And you were like, yeah, no. Uh, and the other day was actually a prime example. I was going to order us lunch. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what do you want? And you're like, I don't know, figure something out. And something popped up on my phone and I ended up like three other apps away. And you're like, so yeah. you working on lunch? And I was like, oh my God, no, I'm not. I'm on Instagram. Right. So how does that happen? How do you go from nine to midnight, even if you're drinking with your mm -hmm. friends and not touch your phone? Right. You, Unless you're one of those people that just don't ever use their social media, you are habitually checking your phone. Mm -hmm. And if you think I'm wrong, leave your phone at home and go to work. And tell me how fucking awkward it feels not having your phone attached to you constantly. I don't I don't believe that. I think that when people do that shit, it's intentional. Yeah. I, I truly do not believe it's an accident. Hmm. I just don't. I just don't. Okay. <clears throat> yes, uh, Victoria, the announcement did happen. Our t-shirts, the, the Love Is Not Enough t-shirts are live on our, our website. All right. So I'm going to run through some supers real quick. And then we are going to field some questions. Uh Katrina Shields for 20 bucks said to be better nation. You guys read and the thank you email I sent on the self-sabotage episode. I paused it and ran to my man to let him know we have to watch it together. We laughed and cried with you guys. Thanks again for being you. Do you remember that email? I don't. I do not. Okay. I feel bad saying that. That they was all, a long fucking episode. They run. They really run together. Yep. That self-sabotage episode. Funny fact was a fucking problem. Like it was a, when I say it was a problem, I mean, it was a problem. AJ mm -hmm. can verify. We had issues with the upload. We had issues with him downloading it. It took like three fucking days for him to get it from Florida to his computer with all the issues that we were having. Once he edited it, the volume didn't, or the words didn't match our mouth movements, which was also a problem. Um, and then we also had issues with re-uploading to YouTube 
It was just a fucking mess. Yeah. A lot going on. Yep. But that was also one of the longer episodes that we've done. And everybody in Discord was like, I love these three hour episodes, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. So I want to make sure that we do a couple of those. We're getting a lot of shirt orders. Good. That's what we wanted. Hopefully we sell out tonight. It is a limited run. There's yeah. only 160 shirts. Yeah. Once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Small to 3X. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, John Hogan and Barb's both did early access. We appreciate that. Ooh. Um, John Hogan's my mentor, everyone. So if he's still in the chat, say hello to John Hogan. Um, Hi, John. Zach said, y'all weren't here for the first YouTube live. Oh, wait, that wasn't what I'm supposed to be reading. That's just the way it screenshotted. <laughs> ah. uh, Mama to Burdette said $10. Thank you for everything. Uh, Lisa Ricks, it's considered commentary. Sabrina Hubbard, I always try to make sure after any serious disagreement, my fiance and I try to go in for a hug because it helps calm us after. You want to talk about that? I need you to repeat that. I always try to make sure after any serious disagreement, my fiance and I try to go in for a hug Mm. because it helps calm us after it. Yes. I need that. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to elaborate on it? Yeah, I'm even going to you. So you got full attention. Oh, no, I have to itch my nose. Don't do it yet. It's too late. You're already there. Everybody look at her itch her nose. She's not itching her nose. She's playing, adjusting her jewelry. Is, it, is that the, sa- is the statement? No. My septum's doing a thing. Okay. All right. So, I'll turn it back to me. It's okay. We're Too ready. Late. There you go. Okay. So it is actually scientifically proven when you hug your partner for a minute or longer, it calms your nervous system, it regulates your heartbeat, and it regulates your breathing. The compression is a like a weighted blanket for your soul. I'm done. <laughs> okay i can see your thumb sitting there no well i was i didn't want to yeah. i'm trying to, to i'm multitasking i have one hand on my mouse and one hand on my stream deck so like i can i'm trying to keep my thumbs where they need to be like yeah. on the middle button so that i can where i need to go go quick that that um that's not something that i've ever been able to do mm-hmm. so the the conflict of uh or i'm sorry the conflict resolution where there is um, intimacy afterwards that's that's intimate mm-hmm. y- you are telling your person like hey i'm not leaving Right. I need that. I actually do need that when we're going through it. The problem mm-hmm. is, is I don't like being touched when I'm frustrated because of the, the, the overwhelming. Right. Us, me knowing that that's a thing for you has been a very difficult thing for me to overcome. And I have to make the decision to actively walk over there and do it because it also doesn't come natural for me. Mm-hmm. So you've gotten to the point where you are able to be direct and just fucking tell me like, I need you to hold me right now. And I do. But I also benefit from that because in forcing myself to do that, I'm getting that same dopamine response. And I'm also, it's also showing me that you're not, you're not leaving. Like you're here. Mm -hmm. It's important. So it is. Um, Zach said, make sure, oh wait, make sure you like, and you like, and most importantly, subscribe, share it with your people and spread the love and growth. Uh, (laughs) Dea message retracted. (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) Uh, And I always say that because they, they were doing that to us last week. Do you remember that? The super no, chats I'm and reading. Messages. I can't. I can't retain. Well, you should be paying reading. attention to me, anyways. Okay. Because I'm reading super chats right now. This is relevant. People are paying us for our time. You are step your game up, scrub. <laughs> <laughs> did that? Did not do the trick. I need. I don't know. Do I need to do this instead? Got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh. Cerulean Fire said, "Boom!" Yeah, because of the sound. Um, Pikachu, Pikachu sent a flying pair, I, a super pair. I don't know what that is. Zach said, "Do do do." Janae didn't say anything. Suan sent a heart. Uh, I feel like I skipped someone. Oh yeah, J- Jasmine said, "I'm listening to this and reflecting on things that happened recently." And man, oh man, is this hitting hard. Also, yay me for hitting the bingo. Hell yeah. Um, I thought they got rid of all those bingo ho- halls down here. Um, Didn't they I get raided? Know. I thought they got raided and shut all those down. I don't know where she's going. Hmm. Um, Emily T, just want to say thank you from the UK. Your podcast, Get Me Through My Night Shifts. I love that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They were listening to us. Yeah, to get them to get them through their things. That's why, we, you know, wow. that's, that's one of the reasons why I want to keep doing content. You know how many yeah. times people are like, oh, man, there's no release today. I don't have nothing to listen to. Lorraine did that shit the other day. And I was like, yeah. oh, we got one coming. Yeah. So uh, Abby Muser said, I am so guilty of this. I am definitely going to visit my husband at work tonight and super apologize. Thank you all for unlo- unknowingly calling me out. It's made me realize a lot. I love that. I have a challenge for you. When you get there, thank him for working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit goes a long fucking way. Hit him with that apology and then thank him. Yeah. 
Sandra said, I wish y'all used a different color for the front of the shirt because I hate red, but I ordered one and giant ego one to sleep in. Love that. Well, then you might have gotten the last ego kills talent shirt. Yeah. Um, I was going to do pink for the love. Love love is not enough, but mm -hmm. I, I felt red was more of a. I don't know, a vibe, I guess. Yeah. All right. That's all the super chats that, that I've gotten from AJ. OK. Um. Do we want to do any kind of emails or anything like that? Like we have, we've only been on for an hour. I don't know. What do you want to do? Kind of burnt out on emails right now. Okay. We did a lot today. Do we, do you, you want to have a, a, a faux side piece where we talk about things that you should be doing to fix yourself in between the dating phases? Yes. We, we talked about that a little bit. Um, Hang on. We're getting more super sent to me. Um, Daya said, sorry, I misspelled something and thought I could fix it. It it said, love the new layout. I made it on time. Yay. A word. I'm glad you made it on time. Oh, man. All right. I'm going to read these two because these are not super chats. But uh, Kelsey said, my boyfriend is uncomfortable with the fact that my fiance before him passed away and I speak highly of him. What can I do to help him understand I'm committed to him now? That that is an insecure mindset. Very insecure. I mean, <clears throat> guy. Read that to me one more time. Um, my boyfriend is uncomfortable with the fact that my fiance before him passed away, and I speak highly of him. What can I do to help him understand I'm committed to him now? <clears throat> Sounds like you're gonna cheat. Right. I... Wow. That that's that that is truly a very weak mindset. That is a very. I, I am I am of the belief system that if you've spent time with somebody and they held a, a a part of your life, regardless of why you're not with them anymore, you don't have to hate them. Right. That, can, that's a very childish mindset. It is. It is. And you can choose to speak highly of people right. and to still hold them in high regard, even though we, you guys didn't work out. Because mm -hmm. even if you spent two years with somebody and had a horrible fucking breakup, you sp still spent two years with them. And at one point you fucking cared about them. So to put on a front to make it look like you fucking hate them and they're a giant piece of shit makes you look pathetic. Yeah. So in this scenario, obviously she's not doing that. So I'm not trying to like say that's what she's doing, but for him to realize or not realize that that is the past and this is her now is a problem. Someone said, stop talking about the late fiance. I disagree with that. I disagree with it too. Yeah. No, that's part of her past. Right. And she lost somebody she was going to get married to. I, I, I'm sure there's still a lot of processing going on. And bringing up happy, good memories with that person should be supported. I, I think that that depends on how it's being brought up. Yeah, I agree with that. Because there there are ways, uh, right and wrong ways to have those conversations. You know what I mean? Like keeping mm -hmm. someone's memory alive is, is different than being like, well, you know, he used to do this in the bedroom. You should do that too. Because right. it's a very different scenario. That is very different. Or so context, I can't believe you're slacking on this. He never did right. that. Context absolutely matters it does. there. If it's, I don't know, you guys are just talking about the past. And she goes, oh, I remember this one time where him and I did this. And I had a blast. And I learned this. He's by proxy in that memory. Right. You know, or... I don't know if there's a, a discussion about being a good gentleman and she brings up something. She She's allowed to speak highly of him. Right. I don't know. That gives me a weird vibe that he's like, he's speak ill of the dead. He, no, he's just insecure. He really is insecure. In that yeah. scenario, like he's, if, if that is the scenario, mm. he's not living up to the expectations of the previous man. And that's his shortcoming. And instead of fixing it, he's mm. getting salty about it. Yeah. That's a problem too. So... What if he's not lacking? He just thinks he is. Then he needs to work on his self-esteem. Right. That falls right back onto that insecurity thing. Yeah. I, I don't understand that mindset. Me either. I, I really don't. Um, all right. The other one was, is there a better, this is from Zach. Is there a better way to express to an SO that a verbal apology does nothing for you that doesn't shit on them? Request forgiveness is 0% for me and that tracks. I fucking agree. Yeah. Um, it would need to be, I appreciate you apologizing. I would have to see the actions change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe apologies until I see the effort put into the apology. Yeah. For me, for me, it would have to be, um, I, I need to see change. I need to, sh you need to show me that you're trying because that's the way my, my brain processes your apology. Mm 
Mm. If you make it about you and not about them, it's normally taken better. So like if you approach that conversation with, look, I've done a lot of research and the way that my brain processes an apology is by changed action. Mm -hmm. So I'm recognizing that you're saying you're sorry. I'm working on your forgiveness effectively now, but I need to see the change in order for that to solidify. It's like waiting on concrete to cure. You right. know what I mean? It's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Anything else on that one before I move on to the next chat? No. All right. Heather said, you two make me so happy. And Zeke, Jen A, AJ, and everyone else in our community slash nation, you are all amazing. Thank you. You know, I do want to go back to the other one. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Like, yeah. I, I do appreciate the thank you. Did she ask how to, what did she say? Did she ask us a question or did she just say that he's insecure? I said he was insecure. She said, my boyfriend is uncomfortable with the fact that my fiance before him passed away and I speak highly of him. That's the issue. That's it. Did yeah. she ask a question? What can I do to help him understand I'm committed to him now? Ask him what he needs to feel reassured in the relationship. And if he says, don't talk about him to me anymore, he needs to understand at that point he's shutting a door on who you are as a person. Okay. I would appease that. If you were to say, I need you to stop talking about him, I would. But you need to understand that at that point, you're not getting all of who I am. And that could change who I am with you. That explanation sounds better than what you had originally said. Yeah. That, that actually makes sense. <clears throat> you don't have to. I mean, if she's if that's all she talks about, mm -hmm. I can see it being a problem. Right. But to have a conversation about, we talk about our exes to, to each other. We do. Good, good and bad. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when neither one of us are ever like, oh, I can't believe you'd bring him up to me. I say that's a dope memory. Right. Thank you for sharing that with me. Right. There's no reason to have an insecurity there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a different scenario because he passed. But if you still wanted to be with somebody else, you would have been. Mm -hmm. This There's not a reason to be insecure there. It's not like she can go back to him. It's not right. like there was a bad breakup. You know what I mean? There's, mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> Miranda said, love y'all's content. Glad to help any way I can. Um, I'm going to read the super chats and then go back to the questions. How can I practice check-ins while single? Never got to do one, uh, do the check-in with my ex, my, with my now ex. So you're single. You're not going to practice with another person. You need to ask yourself those questions. You need to ask yourself, how am I treating myself? What have I done this week that I shouldn't have done? What could I have done better? You need to self-reflect and you need to work on yourself. When you work on yourself, you'll be able to work on yourself with somebody else. And then you can help them do the inner work as well. Yeah. You can't. That's not what I want to say. I would say the check-ins for yourself is just self-care and self-love. Resolving yeah. your own shit and asking yourself the hard questions. Because if you can't take your own criticism, you can't take it from a partner. Right. We, we need to come back to that because I, I want to have that conversation about the, the work that needs to be done mm -hmm. uh, in between dating people. Okay. Because it's very prevalent. Um, Leilani said, I wish I could get a shirt or give more. But Bills, you know, I heart you guys. You've helped me grow and know what I want in my relationship. Been sharing with my significant other. I love that. Thank you. Mm. Baby Witchling said, advice on helping my boyfriend. This is a $50 super chat. Oh, advice sure. on helping my boyfriend open up. I've uh, brought up the check-ins, had one. He asked to watch to be be together on his terms or on his terms. Uh, he brushes it off and I'm starting to feel iced out or that I'm putting in the emotional work <clears throat> and he's not my perception. I'm going to go to your camera so that you can answer that. And then I'm going to go on a tirade. Okay. So... Advice on helping my boyfriend open up. I brought up to be better check-ins. I would say at this point, all you can do is just continue to work on yourself. Um, men tend to emotionally and intimately follow the woman in the relationship. So if you're working on yourself and you're in a better mood and you're implementing things and he's noticing a change, he'll be more apt to follow that. And it's not going to be like, okay, when's the other shoe going to drop? You know, it's, it's good for a week or two. What's going to happen next week? Waiting for the next argument. Don't don't push it on him. I don't know. I would need more information to give a better answer. So I, I actually agree with what you said. Mm -hmm. um, the changed behavior over time is going to make the conversations easier. Yeah. 
um, and it's going to show the change behavior. So it's going to make him relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, on this entire thing, though, the way that I would approach this situation is if I wanted to do something with you that I thought was going to make our relationship better and you were vehemently against it, I would ask you why. Mm -hmm. Because we know that a check-in could take anywhere from an hour to three hours. It is literally just a conversation with the two of us. Mm -hmm. And if I can do something or you can do something that's going to benefit our relationship long term, and you literally just have to sit there and talk to me, why would you not want to do that? Right. Um, even if it's not watching the podcast, you, he doesn't have to. You could send him the check-in video and be like, hey, this is what I'm showing you. On you know, Send it to him on his phone so that he can watch it while he's taking a poop or whatever. And if he doesn't want to do that, go to the website, tobebetter.co, mm -hmm. download the check-in PDF, print it out, and just approach him on a Sunday and be like, look, I know that you don't want to do this. I'm asking you for an hour or of two of your time. Just hang out with me, have a conversation. The worst that's going to happen is you're not going to enjoy this conversation mm -hmm. and we're going to go about our lives. How do we know if we don't try? The best case scenario is we're going to have this conversation, learn about each other, and our fucking relationship is going to improve. Why would you not want that? Right. Our relationship is dope as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But if I find something that's going to make our relationship better, we're damn it, it, I'm bringing that shit to the table. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why people would, would actively sidestep something that's going to make your life better. I have no idea. <clears throat> Angela Bartolone, who I believe is also, oh yeah, new to Patreon and Discord. I was just about to say, I thought I saw her name pop up on Patreon earlier. Um, just wanted to say congratulations on 60K subs and thank you both for all that you do. New to Patreon, <laughs> Discord as of today and loving it. I know that she signed up today because she signed up while we were recording today's episodes. Oh, yeah. I was like, new patron. Yeah, that was her. That's dope. That is that is a first. Um, AJ, uh, Zach asked AJ for an update on going to John's for plants. Um, John is, is having hurricane repairs finally to his house, and we are on call. Yeah. So when he's ready to do that, we are going to go get plants. I don't, John is somebody that I deeply care about. So I'm not trying to put him in any type of unnecessary stress or discomfort. Right. There's no need for that. Yeah. When he's ready for us to come over there, we'll, we'll shoot over and, and mm -hmm. do the thing. Um, I'm going to try to say this name and I'm probably going to butcher it. Solveig, S-O-L-V-E-I-G. How would you say that? Where is that? Um, it's AJ sent it to me. It's a oh. screenshot. He said, you talk about calming someone under a BPD episode. Every time I have an episode and they try to calm me, I end up losing myself and them because I'm going crazy more than they are trying. They can't calm you down. Mm -mm. It doesn't work that way. Your feelings and your emotions are a you problem. You can't rely on anyone else to do anything. I would recommend buying uh, the books, uh, Buddha and the Borderline, the book Walking on Eggshells, and I Love You, I Hate You, Don't Leave Me. Mm -hmm. And read those books. Your borderline is a you problem. That doesn't, it's nobody else's issue but your own. Yeah. And for somebody to be in a relationship with you, having borderline sucks ass. And you have to understand that as somebody who has borderline, you're the fucking problem in that situation. Mm -hmm. And if they're choosing to be with you, it's a choice they're making. They don't fucking owe you anything. The yeah. fact that they stay with you while you're going through a fucking episode says a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I've stressed that so much. I, I can't even, I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Justine said, call me all the way out into the streets on a weekly basis at minimum. You've helped me grow as a person, woman, and a follower of Christ and a significant other again sometimes in the distant future. Oh, the significant other again sometime in the distant future. I love everything about that one. Yeah. Um, AJ said to vlog it when we go. We actually got permission from John to bring cameras to his house. Yep, so that was a be. thing. Uh, Court Turner, my fiance and I love your content. We have grown together so much. Appreciate y'all. You are amazing and beautiful people. Thank you for being you. All right. So we're caught up on supers. I would like to have the, the side piece discussion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so Jennifer, who is our email screener, when we did the dating episode, sent us a message, I'm assuming right after she watched it, and said that we need to have a side piece discussion where we talk about the things that you should be doing to work on yourself in between relationships. So being that we have both done it in different ways, mm -hmm. what were some of the things that you did for yourself to improve who you were in between relationships from your last person to me? So the first thing I did was I sat down, I thought about why does every relationship go the way it goes for me? There's common denominators. Not every relationship was the same, but there were a lot of things that were problems that I was creating. I sat down and I really thought about my life and I took a lot of accountability and I cried for like 13 hours straight. 
once I realized that I was the issue and I could pinpoint the problems, but I couldn't understand them and I couldn't work through them and learn how to cope with them, I turned to YouTube because I couldn't afford a a therapist. So I just started YouTubing a bunch of shit, how to handle anxiety, how to deal with depression. And that took me down other avenues of like learning about schizophrenia and how people deal with ADHD and they cope with OCD and all of these other things. And I started piecing together from all of these different videos about how to cope with all the different mental illnesses on how to cope with my own. And in doing so, I learned a lot of tools that I would not have learned otherwise because I'm not a schizophrenic. I am not going to go to a therapist and they're going to teach me the tools that a schizophrenic uses, but they can be adapted to almost anything. So I started doing that. I started working out. On my runs, I would problem solve. I would dedicate time to actually sitting down and dealing with my traumas. So that was probably one of the hardest parts of the whole process was facing my childhood, reliving those moments, dissecting them and recognizing that I was let down a lot. And because of that, I allowed it to dictate who I became as an adult. And in recognizing that all of my behaviors were really my behaviors and not my trauma, that was a hard thing to deal with. So you, you went all the way back to your childhood with this? Yeah, I did. Okay. And what, how did that look? Because that, that is ugly, not your childhood, but Mm -hmm. like having to go that far back and like learn about your behavioral traits and how to fix that. Like that can get fucking nasty. It was bad. Like that's ugly cry therapy shit. It was to the point where I was considering Baker acting myself. It was bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of me crying in the bathroom on the floor. A lot of me. Yeah, a lot of. A lot, a lot of dark areas. So I did that once I got through that first one. It took me probably. A week or two weeks to just focus on one specific trauma for my childhood. And after that two weeks, I came out the other side and I recognized that it's okay. I went back to that moment. I relived it. I analyzed it. I dissected it. I figured out what actions were correlating to that, what thought processes were correlating to that trauma. And I recognized that I didn't die from it. It wasn't the end of the world. And it went from being a two week process to a three day process. And now it maybe takes me, depending on the situation, it could take 30 minutes. If it's like a really hard thing that triggered me and I've never encountered it before, maybe 12 hours. Um, yeah, but it is, an, it is not a pretty process. I have a question. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Okay. Are you done with that thought? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were because you were like, it's not a pretty process and you weren't still going on points. Okay. Did that affect your mental health going through all that? Like having to process like that did you find yourself in a depressive state like how did that look because i was suicidally depressive okay yeah yeah every day i would wake up the first thought on my mind is i want to kill myself so for you guys who ask us constantly the work that goes into to improving who you are to get to the point where you have what we have Mm -hmm. it's not going to be an easy process i I did a lot of that shit in therapy when i was younger because i was forced to go to therapy and Mm -hmm. counseling and court ordered all that shit like Lots of psychiatric evaluations, the whole nine. Um, <clears throat> so I processed a lot of that shit very differently than you did. And like, I'm very numb to the things that's happened in my life mm-hmm. because it's me. But yeah. when I hear it happening to other people and I relate to it, I fall the fuck apart. And that's something that I'm still working to get past. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't realize that you went that deep into it. We've never had this conversation. No. When we talked about it because my perception... Mm-hmm. is my reality. So I honestly assume that you just did the same shit I did to figure out what I needed to do to be better. Our, our situation and our, our improvement states, um, steps mm-hmm. are very fucking different. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I didn't do all that. I didn't have to go that far back. I had already done that work. Mm-hmm. So when we've talked about doing the dirty work, 
my dirty work and your dirty work is not the fucking same. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't have to do that as an adult. And that I was able to process a lot of that shit as a young man. Well, I guess I was an adult in some of it, but like, I don't know. I didn't realize that that was as far back as you went to the childhood thing. Yeah. I had to go back as far as <clears throat> I would say five, five was when the first super traumatic event happened to me and I had to process that. Mm. That's where my abandonment issues stem from. That's wild. Yeah. It was not pretty. It was, it was really bad. Yeah. What else? Um, so I'll go back to both of us since we're both talking. Um, I think that I want to get a third monitor on your desk. Yeah. So that I can have like this set up so that we can just duplicate the screen, like mirror these so that you can see the screen changes so oh, that, that you know real dope. time what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, with the, with the realization that you were the problem, mm. right? Because we talk about the extreme accountability constantly. And that was a big part for me mm -hmm. is accepting the fact that I was the issue in a lot of the shit that we had going on. Um, do you think that in, in delving into all of that and realizing, um, how did that look for you? Because that, that's not an easy thing. People, people, okay. Just, I, I will absolutely shut up after this. People get into the point where they leave their ex and the ex is the fucking problem no mm -hmm. matter what. Very rarely they'd be like, damn, I could have done this differently. Maybe I should have just watched my tone. Mm -hmm. So how did that look for you to, to take that accountability for the first time and be like, I could have been the problem in all this. What did that look like? So the first time that it hit me that I was the problem, I was the common denominator. I broke down and I thought that I was the most worthless piece of shit on the planet. I can't believe that I hurt people the way that I did. I couldn't believe the things that I did to my body. And yeah, I was absolutely mortified. And that was the lowest of my depression that I wanted to just off myself. How did you start making steps to change that? Uh, I cried a lot. I, ooh, I am very um, comfortable that's the only way I think to describe it. I'm very comfortable with suicidal thoughts. There's something that's been happening since my childhood. So they're not thoughts that scare me. I know that logically is not something that I can ever do. So even in those moments I've dealt with my depression for so long, when I have those thoughts, I know it's not an option for me. Right. So I have that mental war of, I hear you, but that's not going to fucking happen. I need you to shut up so I can just get through this. So that prolongs my mental battle. Did you actually tell your bitch voice to shut up in your head? Yeah. Okay. How, how did that look? Was that like a, an internal dialogue? Where yes. You, yeah. That it, it's all in my mind. Yeah. Right. Well, I ask because I do that. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I like psycho crazy. Oh, it's nonstop. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I just. We've never had this conversation. I don't, I don't know how your brain works in that aspect. On one of our trips, I killed my depression. <clears throat> that I, okay, going both for on this one. <laughs> I, I can verify that. Yeah. I understand that. And I can say that our lives changed after some of those. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that trip where I had a literal like, gun showdown with my depression. Yeah. I've had it more under control. I recognize that I am definitely the one in control here and that every choice that I make matters and every choice that I have impacts me in some way and in, in turn it impacts my mental illnesses. Mushrooms are a hell of a thing. Yeah. So when I was at that lowest point and I recognized that I was the problem and I recognized that offing myself was not an option. All I could do was either sit there and wallow in my self-pity or I could do something about it. And I was tired of being the gullible, naive girl. I was tired of being known as easily frustrated, easily angered, somebody who couldn't handle their temper, um, somebody who used... Oh God, this is going to make me sound really shitty. I used my femininity to, to manipulate people. I really did. I played the victim a lot. It was already, it was always somebody else's fault. Um, I would play stupid. If I did something and I knew it was wrong and I got caught, I would act like I didn't know any better. I was really a shitty human being. 
And when I recognized that I did all of those things, it really hit me like, wow, this is how you've been living your life and this is how people view you. Do you think that that's, that's why you have such disdain for those behaviors when we read emails? I do, okay. yeah. Okay. So after getting over the depression of recognizing that I was a problem and that I had to change my behaviors, I, that's when I started looking at therapists on YouTube and going through notes and recognizing things. And yeah, it took about a year and a half from that point of me recognizing that I'm the problem and getting to the point to where I recognize that I am now a healthier person, that I have made changes in who I am. And that, that's when I decided I'm going to continue doing that because I like evolving as a person. When I was who I was back then, I was stagnant. And I was comfortable in my misery because change was too scary for me. I embrace change now, knowing that nothing is going to kill me. Nothing in this life mentally is going to destroy me. It's fucking game on. Okay, so with where you're at now, because you, you have evolved a mm -hmm. lot. You, you have. Um, I, I've seen it in the last I don't know, four years. You've changed a lot as a person, a fucking lot. Like who you were four years ago to compare to who you are now, mm -hmm. I wouldn't recognize her. Yeah. Um, what do you think that you still have to work on in terms of, of your own self-improvement? Okay. So <clears throat> right now, the most prevalent thing on my mind is that I possibly have BPD. Oh, you went there. I did go there. Okay. So... Right now, my current focus is finding a therapist that specializes in BPD to get the diagnosis. So the things that I am now recognizing as BPD traits that I am working on is I am very quick to be frustrated and angered. Like I fly, fly off the handle quick. Um, I have to work on myself grounding in reality. I have a very hard time distinguishing real life and the only thing I can put, the only way I can put to, the only way I can think to put this is like Ready Player One, where they're in a simulation. Right. So I really do have to sit down and go, okay, this is real life, right? Fucking now. I need to come back. Um. My abandonment issues are not so bad. Something else I'm really working on is my emotional like fly off the handle I have started recognizing that I didn't recognize before that was piling up and I would have those massive breakdowns there are things that are totally irrational that tick me off and make me angry for no fucking reason like you rinsing your cup out the wrong way that's an example that's never happened but it's tedious shit like that oh really what it's, it's never happened <laughs> what do you mean <clears throat> Am I forgetting something? I specifically remember one day you coming into the, the podcast room yeah. or was it my computer while I was editing and calmly through your teeth with a fucking tone of fuck you was like, can you make sure that you rinse your fucking oats out? Like, I you did not say fucking. You didn't say the F word, but it was there. Your body language, the tone, you were fucking infuriated. Okay, that, yeah, that did happen. Right. I was very mad about that. Yep. Yeah, I tried very hard not to be angry. Because I recognized that it triggered me in that moment. I was like, I need to tell him so I don't blow up about this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have to be calm about this because this is really not a big deal, but I'm fucking mad. So <laughs> that is why I have Tim Montoya on speed dial. Yeah. Because in those moments I can go, hey, bro, she fucking didn't rinse the sink out. And I'm ready to kill her. Mm -hmm. and he's like, really? You're going to be that, that irrational right now? It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm like, okay, I'm overreacting. Yeah. That's exactly what I've talked about this entire time about not being able to trust my emotional response to things. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a reaction. It, it's me choosing to respond that way. Right. So that's what I'm really doing right now is sitting back and going, okay, is this really how I'm feeling right now? Or is this my brain just fucking doing its thing? And I need to take a step back and be like, okay, go over there. Get your zoomies out and then we can come back and be rational again. I'm also recognizing the whole. I love you. Get the fuck away from me. OK, well, let's let's elaborate on that, please. So. 
when I get into my emotional mindset, like for example, there was a stint of time. I would say probably like the last three days I have felt like you fucking hated me. And I know that's not logical. I know that you love me, but my brain started picking apart. Like he just walked past me in the kitchen and he didn't touch me. He fucking hates me. That that's part of the abandonment thing with borderline. Is it? Yeah. That falls under the abandonment thing. So in that moment, when I feel that way and it's stacking on top of each other, my brain is going out of its way to pinpoint things that are just normal day to day life, but it's saying, no, something's wrong. So in those moments, I have to push myself to be intimate and affectionate with you. Okay. Because otherwise I'd be like, I'm going to match his fucking energy. Fuck you. I'm not going to touch you. You're not touching me. And that's not logical. It's really not. So in those moments, I'm working on specifically going out of my way and rubbing up on you or kissing you or talking to you, whatever I need to do in that moment to get over that. I love you. Get away from me. Does that make sense? It does. Do you think that? Um. So I also I've noticed the neediness the last few days, which you've also told me, mm-hmm. like you've asked me, like, are we OK? Because you were going through what you're going through with yeah, that. Yeah, I really tried to verbalize what I was going through. It, that's important. So that, that helps me understand where you are. If you, even if you don't have borderline, mm-hmm. it still helps me understand your emotional processes and where your mental space is. Yeah. So let me ask you this because I, I, yesterday was a bad day for me. Right. Not like borderline bad. Like we did cardio. It was a good morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I got into it with the computer shit yesterday and like, I don't do well with technology. Nothing pisses me off the way technology does. Right. Pedophiles and snitches. Those are the two things that are above technology when it comes to pissing me off. Oh, yeah. So I have a very hard time when things aren't working the way they're supposed to fucking work. And I know what I'm doing to make it work that way. So how does that affect you knowing that you are already feeling that way? And I sat in here for almost 10 hours trying to figure that out on top of everything else I did yesterday because you fell asleep on the couch without actually us having any intimate time last night. So I was fucking spiraling. You know, my mind was telling me, you know, he hasn't kissed you yet and he's doing 40 million things. He's preoccupied. He's doing this and that. He doesn't care about you. And I'm like, no, that's not fucking logical. I know when he is in the middle of doing something, he obsesses over it. That's the only thing on his mind. The rest of the world doesn't fucking exist. So that's what I have to tell myself in those moments to rationalize, like bring me, bring me back to the logical. Did it work? It did. I mean, I didn't come to you panicking or like frustrated or like you're not fucking giving me attention. I wasn't even needy. Right. I was really trying hard to keep myself in check because all of this had to be done. And you even told me that you felt lazy yesterday because we weren't recording. So the fact that you found something to preoccupy yourself to make you feel productive, I didn't want to interrupt that. That was hard. That was really hard for me yesterday. I think I did pretty okay knowing that I was spiraling and I was having my moment of, He's going to fucking leave me. I was able to take that step back and be like, okay, he's going through it. I know he's not mad at me. He's pissed off at the technology. Right. He's not being short with me. It's just the fact that he can't figure this out and he doesn't know what's going on. He probably feels like he's stupid. So like it was a lot. Do you think I'm going to go to both of us for a minute. Do you think that, um, that had you come in here and just sat and read, like if one of those big round chairs were in here and you could have just hung out while I was doing that, that, that would have changed for you? Yes. Do you, Why do you think that is? Because I, I really, even if I wasn't angry, right? do you think that that feeling would have changed because you'd have been sitting on it? We'd have been in the same room. Do you think that would have been it? Like, I think that would have done it, yeah. Hmm. I, I felt guilty last night when I because I didn't realize, mm-hmm. I didn't know it was, it was 11 o'clock when I walked out of here. Yeah. And I didn't see any lights on in the house. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh my God, she went to bed without me. Like I kind of panicked a little bit. And I, you know, I, I just messaged AJ. I'm like, I'm so fucking mad right now. And I walked in the living room and saw that you were on the little chair and the TV was off. Like it was quiet. Mm. I'm like, okay, she didn't go to bed without me. Oh, did me. Netflix stop? Yep. And I was like, babe, you are out, out. Mm-hmm. And I rubbed on the back of your arm a little bit because of the way you were laying on the chair. And like, it took you a minute to kind of come to him. Like, let's go to bed. Mm-hmm. And we went to bed and we brushed our teeth and we were doing our thing as we were getting ready for bed. And um, I told you I was frustrated and I explained to what was happening. Yeah. But I also know that you don't know tech like I know tech. So me trying to explain that to you is, is you know, a third language. Yeah. Um, But I was very worried about that whole process because I knew that you were already feeling the way that you were feeling. And I spent most of the evening in here trying to work on this. So there was an even in my mind, yeah. I kind of knew something was happening when we went to bed. 
I want you to so, know I'm not, I wasn't mad at you or anything. No, I, I know. Like, I was just... I know. I was dealing with my shit and trying not to disturb our peace, right. I guess. But there was a disruption of our routine. Yeah. Because normally around 9 o'clock, we stop doing everything and we spend two to three hours on the couch just mm-hmm. touching each other, watching TV, playing on our phones in doing silence, whatever. whatever. Mm-hmm. And we missed all of that last night. It's the first time since we've been together that we did not have that downtime before going to bed. Whether it's even in the car ride home from the movies, we've always had that intimate, you know, hand holding, foot holding, whatever, mm-hmm. and we didn't have that last night. So, um, that was very weird for me. I I want to I'm gonna go to my side of things, okay? Just because we kind of went on a ramble, but before I do that, I want to remind you guys that this is a thing. <laughs> I am so obsessed. I love how that looks. It it came out really really good. It did, yeah. And it, it's a tri blend T shirt. Oh, it These does are feel softer very nice. and lighter than the other shirts that yeah. we have. I am I am such a fan of those shirts. So before you jump into your side of things, okay, do you think I'm handling myself better? Um, yeah. So uh, diagnosis is a fucking label, right? Even if you never got diagnosed and you only speculated that you had borderline, the mm-hmm. things that you can do to use t- on yourself if you actually have it is going to improve your other responses to scenarios because it makes you it forces you Mm -hmm. borderline forces you to step back and go from emotional mind to logic mind before responding because you know that if you respond in emotional mind you are going to self-destruct you're going to fucking destroy everything i used to do that a lot too i would self-sabotage my relationships a lot yeah yeah i would self-destruct a fucking lot and then i would expect the person that i just self-destructed on to comfort me and make me feel better yeah yep that's something I also recognize I did that fucking broke me. It, it becomes very much a everyone else is the problem mm-hmm. and you feel validated in the way that you feel. So like when you have that, um, when you have that meltdown and you feel mm-hmm. that they're the problem that they've slighted you and you are in that emotional rage, mm-hmm. you believe it. Yeah. You fucking believe that it's a valid response to what's happening. Mm -hmm. And everyone else around you is like, I can't believe that they're doing that. And when I realized that that was the case, I started finding, I found somebody that I can reach out to to call and explain all my scenarios. And it's helped me process a lot of shit. So. So somebody just asked, are you self-diagnosing then? No, I'm not self-diagnosing right now. No. It is something that we had a discussion about as somebody who has been diagnosed with borderline. You have pointed some things out to me. I have been doing some self-reflection and really dissecting the things that I do and they are making more sense. And that is why I am looking into a BPD specific therapist yeah. to tell me if this is what's going on or not. Which is exactly how that conversation started. I know. So I don't know if they jumped in after the fact, but we actually specified that before we yeah. went into that little tirade. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't do the self-diagnosis and we don't do the self-medication thing in this Mm-mm. house. So... Um, we just got some shirt orders, guys. I, I appreciate you guys supporting the t-shirt thing. Like it that, is really dope. That is another way that helps drive what we're doing. We also have stickers coming that will be coming tomorrow, so no orders are getting filled until after the stickers come. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who have already bought t-shirts from us, we have new stickers coming. Um, and I may even start putting together sticker packs for sale because we ordered a lot of fucking stickers. That would be dope. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me... Um, I'm, I'm going to just go a little bit. And then if you have questions, okay. just let me know and I'll switch back to you and we can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, with my in-between relationship work that I knew needed to be done, um, I knew uh, how many things I changed about who I was in my last relationship that made me a shell of a man. Mm-hmm. Um, and that wasn't a term that I knew until like six months ago. I always just, ex- you know, you, you want, um, how do I word this? Oh man, most uh, uh, men, I'm sorry. Most men will try to appease their woman to make them happy to the point that they forget who the fuck they are. You want to do and do and do to please, or you want to avoid conflict or you want to avoid the controlling, nagging, mothering shit that happens that you stop doing things or you stop having that, um, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. And that's all that matters Mm -hmm. because it's no longer just you, especially if you're married, you're living for another person. So you have to make changes to the things that you believe in to make them happy, to appease the situation or to avoid conflict. 
<clears throat> so for me, I looked back at my last relationship, my last marriage, more well, my only marriage before this one, um, and looked at all the things that I changed about me to appease the situation and everything that I did and then everything I refused to do. And I realized that in becoming a shell of a man, I lost my backbone. Yeah. And it got to the point that like I was not um standing up for myself and the things that I believed in anymore. And like I lost my self-worth. So for me, it started out with that. And then I realized that 90% of the issues that I was having in my previous marriage came from my inability to communicate. Yeah. Whether it was because of borderline or because I didn't have the words or because I simply didn't want to fight about it. Because that's a very real thing. And it's not that I'm non-confrontational. There's just some arguments aren't fucking worth having. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, um, I realized that I needed to take accountability first and foremost because I, I didn't want to blame her. Like I didn't want to throw shade on anyone. I wanted to go, okay, how could I have changed these situations? And in doing that, I realized that I can't change shit. I have to take account accountability for what I did mm -hmm. and not make those mistakes again. So I started looking for books on accountability and I found the book by Jocko called Extreme Ownership and I read Extreme Ownership like four or five times and I took a lot in from that and I started using that to process my shit and then I went down the rabbit hole of not being able to communicate and started reading books on body language, started reading books on um, uh, uh, the interrogation, uh, Chris Voss. Mm -hmm. Um, I started reading books in that scenario so that when I needed to explain something to somebody, I was able to do it in a way that did not come across as condescending because I can be that guy. Right. I know that I'm a very intense person. And sometimes when I say things, it's very matter of fact. And I've had to learn to, to soften that, even though I still get told all the time that I, I'm kind of an asshole the way that I speak. And I'm very blunt. Guys, this is nothing compared to who I was before I fucking promise. I was very, very matter of fact. I was mm -hmm. a fucking dick about it. Um. So there was things that I had to work on in that aspect. So for me, our, our workload was very different. I didn't have to go back that far. I went back 20 years and was like, this, these are the things that I lost and who I believe I am. These are the things that I'm not willing to stand for ever again moving forward. I realized that I had no boundaries. Mm -hmm. There was never any boundary set. We just did what was what. And it created a whole lot of fucking problems. So like knowing that I was like, all right, moving forward, I know that I need to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. I need to have expectations laid out so that everybody knows what everybody's fucking job is and what everybody's, you know, is and is not okay. So that there's no conflict because just overstepping boundaries, if they're not known is going to create a negativity bias. And if, right. if you guys can't communicate, you're going to start arguing. So like, I know all this shit now because it happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so I realized all of that and I started doing that and working through those things. Um, Another thing that I realized was that, um, oh man, I, I realized that a lot of my issues come down to reacting instead of responding to situations. And like, I am a very dry humor person. Mm -hmm. I will poke the bear because it's funny to me and it's not okay for a lot of other people. So yeah. like for me, uh, for us, one of the big things is that we were never going to talk about divorce. We were never going to joke about divorce. We were not going to sow that seed. My previous relationship, I did that shit a lot mm -hmm. um, because it was funny to me. Like, I, I realized you can't do that. Like, so a lot of the things that were thrown in my face during the divorce process, I looked at those and go, okay, these are my flaws. She's telling me what my fucking problems are. I need to fix these problems. And that's how I did my work to move forward. And I made sure that like I got over my shit before we started talking. Like mm -hmm. to, to be fair, to be fair, mm -hmm. um, you were kind of my therapist through a lot of that shit because we had a lot of those conversations at dinner, like at, you know, eating and just hanging out where I was able to bounce these things off of you. And I'm going to go back to both of us. That was one of those things where you got to see my accountability in real time because mm -hmm. every time I was like, this is fucked up and this is what's happening. I would always stop and go, but I did, or I said, this is this, this is that. And I would always pull the account accountability away from her and make everything a me problem right? because I can't change her and mm -hmm. I can't change the past. So the only thing I can do is make it all about me, figure out where my fucking shortcomings are and fix them. And that's, that's how I approached everything. And I worked on one specific thing over and over and over again until it no longer bothered me. And when I no longer felt a guilt or a resentment or an animosity or any type of anything, mm -hmm. and we could just talk about it and it was just a normal conversation, I knew I was over it. 
That's how I recognized I was over things too. It's crazy how that works. You get to a point, it's not even a numb feeling. You just don't care anymore. Like you got it's it. It's an acceptance. Like, yeah. When I process all the things from my childhood that used to make me panic or I would start crying or I would, I almost grieved my childhood. And now when I look back at all the things that happened to me, it is a, a sensation of acceptance. It's a very calm feeling. It's an acknowledgement that all of these things happened, but it's not happening to me anymore. All I can do is take from that and learn from it and recognize that that's something I'm not going to tolerate. And it's something I'm never going to do to another human being. You okay. No, yeah, just it, I wasn't expecting this conversation to go this way, yeah. and like, I it, this is going to sound kind of fucked up, and I know that it's going to sound kind of fucked up. I enjoyed that entire process in my life. Me too. Right? Like yeah. you were a fucking mess, according to what you just said. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah. I and I I had it too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there were nights that like. I fucking cried myself to sleep. Like I was, uh, I, I viewed myself as a big piece of shit. Like I, my, my previous relationship destroyed my self esteem. Mm -hmm. Like it destroyed the man that I believed I was. I had, you can go back and watch the, my apology video. Yeah. Who I believed I was versus who I am was two very different things. Um, but I look back on that and I'm fucking grateful that I went through it. Like I look back on that and the process of becoming better because of all of that work. Like I'm, mm -hmm. It, there's a um an air of of pride i fucking did that yeah yeah yep. because it's very easy to fall back on your sit back on your laurels and like do the easy thing throw shade and and blame and then go into the next relationship with a whole bunch of animosity and resentment and hatred towards other people and fail mm -hmm. and i didn't want that if right. i'm going to do this i want to be fucking successful at it or i'm not doing it so um for me that's what a lot of that looked like it was the extreme accountability and knowing that moving forward all of the shit that happened in my past relationships are not going to affect anyone mm -hmm. because they're over with. But if I don't correct the problems, it's going to repeat itself. It's no different than the obstacle shit that we talk about all the time. God yeah. will put obstacles in your way until you learn how to overcome them. Once you can overcome them, they're not coming anymore. You figured that shit out. Yeah. You, you, you can see it coming. Okay, there's this obstacle coming. I got to prepare for it. And then mm -hmm. it's no longer an obstacle. It's a bump. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that, that preparation for me was a, a big deal. Um. That's really all I got on that. We're two hours in. AJ, yeah. you can go ahead and send the rest of those supers. I have a couple of things that he sent me while we were talking. Okay. Zach said, Peaches, I appreciate you sharing this with us. I know it's not something you've been, I'm sorry. I know this is something you've been struggling with and it's a big step. Thank you. Um, Kitsune says, how do you feel about people using YouTube instead of therapy? I support it. I do too. That is exactly how I got through all my bullshit. Yep. I, I believe, I believe that doing something is better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you don't have the ability to spend hundreds of dollars on a therapist or you don't have insurance or whatever the case is, you can fucking do something. You can make the decision to not be a fucking victim and start learning. And if you have to do that on YouTube, so be it. Yeah. Um, Zach says, guys, take a, a moment and send a prayer or positive vibes for those in the path of storms tonight. Um, All right, we read that one already. Babe, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, before you keep going, I, there was another thing that I had to accept about myself and process, and it's that I was being a bad mom. Oh, my God. Okay. I wasn't prepared for that one either. No. Uh, the camera, the camera's <laughs> on you. Go ahead. I'm not even going to just do your thing. Okay. So in recognizing all of the things that I was doing wrong in my life, because of who I, I was as a person. I did not have my anxiety under control. I was easily angered, easily frustrated. I was not interacting with my kids in a manner of like taking them out and going to parks. I was so frantic about making sure the house is clean and paying bills and making sure that they have what they need that I was just constantly go, 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 go. There was never a moment of, I need to take a step back and just enjoy this moment with my kids. So I was just constantly rushing them to get things done. Like we have to clean the house. We have to go grocery shopping. We have to get you to school and then I have to go to work and then I have to pick you up and we have to come home and I have to cook dinner and you guys have to put your laundry away. It was just, I was overly frantic and I was oozing my panic and overwhelmed and overstimulated outwards. 
So I was taking away the best version of me for my kids and I was short tempered. So they would get a warning and then I would lose my mind and I would start yelling and I would take things away and you guys are now in timeout. And there was never a conversation of you did this wrong. This is why I'm taking this away. It's because you didn't listen or I've told you three times to do this now because you haven't done that. You're losing whatever. In recognizing that I was not a good mom, that was also one of the things that pushed me over the edge. How, how did that change implement itself? Because that's, that's a fucking hell of a thing to say. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a lot to admit on the internet. Like there's a whole lot of accountability in all of that. And like, I, I respect the shit out of you for putting that out there. Most people would have never admitted that shit, but you had to, at some point make the decision that that's not who you were going to be when it comes to your kids. So how, how did that happen? Um, I didn't <clears> want them growing up and looking back at their childhood the way that I do mine. Do you think that you had that realization while you were picking apart your childhood? Is that, is that how that worked out? Like, yes. okay. That makes sense. You know, they weren't getting the physical abuse or the emotional abuse that I, I got in my childhood. But I recognized that in me raising my voice and being short tempered with them, I was verbally abusing them in a way. And I never want them to look back at their childhood and go, I could never bring anything to my mom because she would get mad at me. Or, you know, I couldn't tell her that I was sad because she would just get angry. I don't want to be that person. You know. I would say that is extreme accountability because there are kids out there who have it really fucking bad right now. You know, children being yelled at is nothing like children being hit. Right. I still don't want them to in the long run, not be able to come to me with anything because they feel unsafe with me in any way. So that was my realization moment that I don't want them to look back and go, I wish she did this better. Um, do you think, that being a stay-at-home mom has impacted your ability to mother. Can you repeat that? Do you think that becoming a stay-at-home mom has impacted your ability to be a mother? Yes, it's definitely made me a better mom. Can you talk about that? So in being a stay-at-home mom, it alleviated a lot of sh the stress that I was having in my life. The fact that I had to keep a family afloat, like everything was on my shoulders, rent, car payments, daycare, you know, getting them to daycare, getting to work on time, making sure that just everything in life was running, that I was maintaining a household, that I was making sure that the kids were being fed while meal prepping for six hours. And it was too much. And in doing all of that, I was taking myself away from them. So becoming a stay at home mom, I now, after that, we, after school gets out, I don't have to worry about leaving work early or scheduling my days off on the days that I have the kids so I can pick them up from school. It's I can go shopping. I can go home. I can take a shower. I can take a bath and then I can leave by three to get there by three 30 to pick them up. And then we can go to the park and then we can come home and they can help me cook dinner. I am definitely a more involved mom with being able to just maintain a household and worry about things at home versus spreading myself so thin that I don't know who I am anymore. Guys, I, I want I want everybody to hear that. I want you to actually hear what she just said. I and I know that that can, I approach that from you being a stay at home mom, <clears throat> but I want to equate that to those women who have a, a, a man in the house that is not present with their children, because in the same same boat that you you were explaining before you became a stay at home mom, if you have a dad that is not involved where you have a partner that is not helping around the house, they're not taking care of things, they're, they're all they're doing is providing and playing video games, or they're not playing with the kids, they're not spending time helping with homework, and all of the duties are falling on the woman to take care of everything. Mm. You can see now why every email that we get from a woman who has kids has that fucking stress in her life, yeah. and she's overwork, run down, and, and like overstimulated with everything because her outside external data... Mm -hmm. is go, 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 go. How am I going to have time to get this done? And then by the time that you're ready for bed at night, mm -hmm. you have nothing that you needed to do for you finished. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not me glorifying our life. Yeah. I wanted you to expand on that because I realized since you've not worked anymore that you pick the kids up a whole lot earlier. I do. Yeah. You get a whole lot of extra time. You guys, I'm going back to both of us. Um, I have to narrate. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so fuck it's, I can't believe it's I just cute. said that. I like it. Um, I noticed that like 
there are days that the kids will play in the backyard and you will just sit on the porch. Yeah. It's fucking hot outside. We live in Florida. It was like 93 degrees yesterday. Mm -hmm. It feels like an oven out there or like a wet dryer. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. No. But they're having the time of their fucking life and you're sitting on the porch sweating your ass off while they're playing. Mm -hmm. We're eating dinner as a family. We are teaching the, the kids, both of us, and, and his dad and his woman. Like, they are on top of shit when it comes to the kids. The kids are getting a better life with you in the house and with her in the house mm-hmm. than they were getting before. They are. Because you're not as stressed out. I'm not as stressed out. Yeah. Knowing that I don't have to worry about shit when the kids come to me with a problem, 90% of the time, I don't have so much on my plate that I can't stop what I'm doing and engage with them. Mm-hmm. There are times where I'm super frustrated. I'm like, hey, guys, like now is not the time, and I'll oh, close yeah. the door. Like doors closed. Mm-hmm. Chris needs a minute. Um, but do you know how different that is than 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 the kids recognizing how fucking overworked and stressed out you are and how shitty you are and not understanding why? Because they don't fucking get it. They have no right. concept of money and bills at that age. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, something that I've done to eliminate me being shitty with the kids is I I maintain a calm demeanor majority of the time. Mm-hmm. When I recognize that I am raising my voice or I am starting to get into that, like, fuck these kids mentality. I stop what I'm doing. I look at them and I go, I'm getting frustrated and they stop. Yeah. They immediately stop what they are doing because they know if they keep going, I'm not going to be able to maintain myself. So I say, I'm frustrated. I need a minute. And they go, okay, I'm sorry. Like they know, like, okay, we pushed her buttons. She's getting to that point. We need to stop what we're doing and apologize. Like that was too far. Right. You know that that ties into that stop thing that we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that I do now. And then I wanted to touch on this before we keep going. The average person can only process seven things at once. So they can perceive something and think about seven things at one time. So you, I could be perceiving four things and thinking about three things. Okay. And for a lot of people, that is still overwhelming. So when you think about the fact that... You could be working, paying all of the bills. You have to come home and clean. You have to go grocery shopping. You have to maintain your car. You have to take care of kids. You have to maintain your fitness. You have to meal prep. You have to cook dinner every day. That is more. Just having one job, you are already thinking of more than seven things in your one job on top of every other aspect in your life. That that amount of overwhelming... I would say 85% of that was eliminated when I became a stay at home mom. It's a, it's a pretty high number. Yeah. So with that being said, then all those people that have those, the non-present parent is what I'm going to refer to them as. Mm -hmm. Um, they're 85% less of the parent they could be. Yeah. Because they don't have the, the aid of having the other parent be properly involved in the child's life. I'm going to hit the stop thing. And then I'm going to go to Super Chats. When I mentioned that stop thing, I only said that so that I wouldn't forget my point because mm-hmm. I wanted to talk on that. You saying to the kids I'm frustrated has happened enough that that is a phrase that they understand immediately mm-hmm. because kids have a limited understanding cognitively of what's going on. Right. They understand simple things. Stop. No. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. They understand I'm getting frustrated. So you don't have to, like if your kid's about to do something, you're like, put that down or don't touch that. They're going to fucking touch it and they're not putting it down right away. It's right. not going to register fast enough. But if you say stop with a little bit of panic in your voice, they fucking freeze because they don't know what's going on. Yeah. So when you tell your kids, I'm frustrated, I need a minute. They understand that because you've had that conversation with them with them enough that they it's absorbed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's coming with learning. Um, that's their cognitive bias. Right. That was the word I was looking for. It's cognitive bias. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else on that before we move on? No. I'm really glad that we touched on all that. I feel like yeah. this has been a very productive live stream. I'm 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 vibing with this. That was very hard <clears> for me. Uh, uh, a lot of people in the chat were saying they were very proud of you. Like yeah. I, I kept glancing over. I'm, I I actually closed the chat on this screen and left AJ's chat up so that I'm not distracted by YouTube. But every once in a while on this screen, it pops up and it. it I, I'm having to do this, and my finger is blocking the chat yeah. box. Yeah. <laughs> Um, or I'm pushing, or I'm pushing my skin over. Yeah. Um, baby witchling said I'm in discord so I can post more detail. He participated in the check-in, but he's not comfortable talking about his emotions. I've been putting in the work myself because I realized I was the main source of issues currently. Um, 
you guys need to remember that most men, if they're over the age of like 25, have been told their entire lives that men aren't supposed to cry, put some fucking dirt on it, suck it up, you pussy. Like That's a lifetime of... It is. A, of a habit being learned. That right. is how that man's brain is wired. Right. So we, we, we filter out what really fucking matters and what doesn't. And if it really fucking matters and we've bottled that shit up, it's not easy to talk about because it's severe. And if we've decided not to bottle it up and we let it out, it's not that big of a fucking deal. There's mm-hmm. no reason to harp on it. It's gone. Right. Um, Sovereign Eli- Eliza, Eliza said, just want to say the growth I have done since listening to you both has painfully removed some people from my life. Uh, it says one out of two chats. I don't know where the other one went. Um, either way, I'm glad. It, change, change is always going to be a discomfort and fuck it. Oh, it's literally the next chat. Um, it's, said, including my boyfriend of two years, who is a better friend than boyfriend, but I have never felt lighter in my life. Thank you both. You are both blessings. Okay, so I'm going to read those as one. Yeah, I'm going to say, I need you to reread that. I'm going to read them both as one. Just want to say the growth I have done since listening to you both has painfully removed some people from my life, including my boyfriend of two years, who is a better friend than a boyfriend, but I have never felt lighter in my life. Thank you both. You are both blessings. I'm going to go to you because I know you got some shit to say. So my first thing is I love that. It, it is very hard to recognize that the person that you're with is not the person for you. Especially after a couple of years, like you have built a foundation with this person. You were hoping that this was going to be your person and in recognizing that, okay, it's not and making not, not just making the choice to leave, but taking the action to leave and separate is a very hard and uncomfortable thing to do. So not just verbalizing that you're a better friend than, you know, than you are with me. Don't say it like that. That's really shitty. Right. <laughs> but but to say, you know, this just isn't working, but I would still love to be your friend. And then taking the action to actually separate and having the strength and discipline to not go back just to have the comfort restored. Right. That's a massive thing to do. That's a big thing too, the comfort thing. <clears throat> I want to point out a couple things in that. One, that happened in the two-year phase. Mm-hmm. So if, it, if that happened within the first two years while you were still in the obsession phase, you two are definitely not meant to be together. Yeah. And the fact that you realized it now and, and it fell away, mm-hmm. that's good because you didn't waste a whole lot of time trying to work. Decades. Right, because in your five years invested and you don't want to leave just because you got five years in. Like mm-hmm. That's a healthy thing. Everything about that is healthy. I, I love all of that. Uh, Kylie Mills says, how do you grow when in a depressive state? How do you grow when you're in a depressive state? Do you want to come back to that one? Because that's a whole conversation about choice theory. I guess we could. How much longer are we going to be on here? I don't want to be on much longer. So okay. let's just answer it. Go ahead. I need you to read it again. How do you grow when in a depressive state? So when you're in a depressive state, if you view yourself, say say we're a little plant, right? And your plant was growing. And now a cloud has come over. It's blocking the sunlight. You're not really growing much anymore. You're still there. You're not dead. If this little plant decides to panic and go, the sun's fucking gone. I'm going to die and goes into a spiral. That thought process will 100% make you wilt. Mm -hmm. If you just go, there's a cloud. At some point that cloud has to move. And you just kind of cope a little bit and you get out from under that rain cloud, things are going to start getting better to get out from under that rain cloud to pass the time before it blows away. You have to do things that keep you active. You have to get out of bed, make your bed, make a point to brush your teeth every morning. If you enjoy reading, make it a point to read at least five pages a day. Force yourself to do this. Set alarms on your phone. If you've been ordering DoorDash and not cooking, make it a point to make your lunch every day. Do little things that force you to be productive and have an accomplishment and count the small wins of today. You made your bed. Fuck yeah. You made your damn bed today. What are you going to do next? Yeah. Every single decision that you make. Yes. Yep. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to answer that, but I happen to look over right at the right time. And Lorraine mm-hmm. said that she wishes that she could give more, but they won't let her go over $500 on YouTube. And Holy Zeke shit. said, Zeke said, you can donate on our website. And she's like, I already have a t-shirt. And I don't know if I missed something else in that conversation, but mm-hmm. we actually do have a donate button yeah. on our website. And I think, oh, wrong one, wrong chat. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. All right. Didn't mean to do that either. 
that little plant analogy make sense to you guys? It, it did. Okay. It did. Let's see if this works. Boom. Boom. Okay. Um, so my answer to Kylie, I'm really glad that I did that because I actually just lost the chat box over there. So now I'm not being distracted at all. Okay, I don't know don't why I didn't think to close that shit. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say some really unpopular shit and it's going to piss off a lot of people in the chat. And I'm going to get a ton of hate. Okay. As somebody who has been clinically diagnosed as depressive, like super depressed, mm -hmm. and I have borderline, I am telling you that being depressed is a fucking choice. Every decision that you make is going to dictate the outcome of your life. Mm -hmm. If it was not a choice, going to therapy would not fix your depression. Right. When you are depressed, your serotonin's off. Mm -hmm. So they give you Prozac to, in, to boost your serotonin. You get that serotonin boost so that you can go to therapy and work through your fucking shit and make the decisions to start living a better life. Right. Figure out what the fuck your problem is and start correcting things. Mm -hmm. Simply going and getting drugs, masking the depression will eventually fade. They then have to give you mood stabilizers on top of your Prozac and higher doses and fucking all that nonsense. The tolerance. You're not fixing the fucking problem. Mm -hmm. You're masking it with drugs. We know that gut health and mental health is directly correlated. So when your gut health is off, your mental health is off. We also know that when you have uh, exercise, you lift weights or you actually do some sort of strenuous exercise, you get a ser serotonin boost, dopamine mm -hmm. response. Your endorphins get released and you feel better. So on a day where I wake up super fucking depressed because there are days that I wake up and look over at my nightstand and go, hmm, should I? Because my pew pew is sitting there. I get up, I put my shoes on and I walk out to the gym and I lift as heavy as I fucking can. Mm -hmm. Or I wake you up if you're not up already. Normally you're up before me doing yoga. I'll be like, come on, we're going to do cardio. Yeah. And I'll put my shoes on and we will leave and we will go do two miles in the fucking woods. And when I'm done, I feel a little bit better mm -hmm. because I made the decision to get my ass out of bed instead of laying there feeling sorry for myself yeah. and started making chains. Once I finished my workout or I finished my um, cardio, my next decision is what am I going to eat? Knowing that I already feel bad, I'm not eating shitty food. I'm not getting McDonald's. I'm right. not getting a milkshake. I'm not getting fucking donuts because I know that my gut health is not right if my mental health is not right. Mm -hmm. So I take some psyllium, psyllium seed husk fiber, some sort of fibrous, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. some glucosamine. I want that in my system. Um, glutamine, I'm sorry, L-glutamine, not glucosamine. Um, and then I, I sit down and I have a protein shake that has natural ingredients in it. Or I, I sit down and have like a healthy, meaty meal mm -hmm. that's not bullshit and then while i'm eating that i start planning out my day okay i know that i need to edit i'm going to give myself three hours for editing after editing i have to clip i need to check discord we need to record and i start plotting out my day and i don't let myself self sit down and start worrying about what the fuck is going on because the more i sit and feel sorry for myself the further down that fucking hole i go yeah and i find myself by midday not feeling anywhere near as bad as i did in the morning mm -hmm. because i made a choice to not feel sorry for myself and get the fuck up and do the things that I need to do. It, it, it's a choice. That's why I started doing yoga. I recognized that my depression was escalating again. I was like, okay, I need to do something to get this shit under control. So I started waking up at 6 a.m. and doing yoga. And after I do my yoga, I meditate. Those two things I've recognized, after I do those two things, I immediately feel better. Halfway through doing my yoga, I do yoga for about 30 to 45 minutes. Halfway through doing my yoga, I recognize I'm already in a better mental state. So it is definitely about what you choose to do with what's going on. You know how easy it is to sit around and feel bad for yourself? Oh, it's so fucking easy. I would love to just lay in bed under a blanket on my phone, stoned as fuck, doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Blaming everything on everyone. Being like, I I'm not enough. Why am I here? What's the fucking point? I'm just going to feel like this again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, the reason that I'm here right now, and I, I talked about this in a previous video as well, is because I believe that I deserve what I have right now. Right. The happiness that I have with you is the reason that I'm still here right now. The The life that I have is the reason I'm still here right now. Because what kept me from making that attempt more than once is the belief that I fucking deserved what I currently have. And now that I've got it, I believe I deserve so much more. Mm -hmm. And I don't let that depressive mindset, I don't let it win. It's a decision. I could absolutely allow that shit to happen. I spent six years of my life in like a daily suicidal fucking mess. Once I made the decision to start taking care of myself and start making the decision to do the right thing, to work through my problems, get therapy when I need it, like mm -hmm. it, it changed my my whole perspective on things. Yeah. 
Uh, Lisa Rick says pitter patter. Oh, there's there's a mouse. Pitter patter. I don't know why she said that. That's what she said. That was a mm-hmm. super chat. So I read it. Uh, Julie Rock said just listening to y'all unpack that is so dang humbling and inspir- inspirational to me. God bless. Um, what was it that we unpacked? Uh, it was just all of the the shit that we were talking about earlier with the okay. things that we work on in between. Um, Hunter Stokes said, y'all have no idea how much I needed to hear this night. I will be a better mom and wife. Thank you for the gut punch. Wolf Spain's workshop says, what's up guys? Keep being badasses to be better nation. Uh, Chris Mitchell said, you're raising awesome human beings. I'm trying. There's a whole lot of in between chats that he sent me, which is not super chats, but he obviously wanted me to look at them because there's, he sent them. So I'm going to just run through them. You can stop me if you need me to. How much y'all, how much have y'all learned about each other since starting this? Oh my God. A lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Yeah. I am not who I was four months ago. This podcast has benefited us way more than it's benefited any of you. I am unrecognizable from who I was four months ago. Yep. And we deal with things so much differently. Oh my God. Yeah. Our life has changed massively. Yep. Yep. Um, Pamela said, is there anything a wife can do to help a husband get back to themselves or maybe overcoming this? Ask him what he needs you to do and then believe him when he tells you. If he says, I just need space, I just need you to be supportive and just be there for me. I don't want to talk about it. Say, okay, I will do that for you and never fucking bring it up again. You can do little check-ins maybe once a week. Just say, Hey babe, how are we doing? How's everything going? And if he says it's going, be like, okay, give him a kiss. Go about doing whatever you're doing. Um, my answer to this is because she said, is there anything a wife can do to help a husband get back to themselves? Mm. I would say that you need to look in the mirror and figure out what you've done to change who he is because your actions are a, will direct the way that he handles things. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done that, ask him, what have I done, good or bad, that's impacted your life? So that I can I can figure out ways to course correct. Um, that's how you help your husband do the things that he's doing. And listen when he tells you something. We've had this conversation yeah. a lot. People will say something and send an email and be like, he said da da da, and I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, he just fucking told you what to do. Like, we're very direct. Right. Uh Katie Lynn said the first time I realized I was the problem was when I first started listening to your podcast, and I've been trying to get better ever since. Which, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you called me out on being the common denominator last week. Since I'm going through my second divorce, it hit me hard and I've been doing a lot of self-reflection and holding myself accountable. That's, that's the first step to becoming better. That's it really is. It's insane. It really is. Zach said the ability to be self-aware and reflect on your parenting before your kids are adults is probably one of the rarest examples of personal growth. Fucking get it. Peaches. That was so fucking hard for me to do that. I bet that was so hard for me to do that. I felt like such a, failure as a parent and what I did with that reckon with that realization I just I changed yep. and when I when I overreact I apologize to the kids when I yell and it's unnecessary I pull them aside and I say I'm sorry that I just yelled at you I shouldn't have done that and they acknowledge my apology you know that that's showing them to take accountability at four and five years old yeah it's fucking huge mm-hmm do you, have you noticed? Uh, oh, I I don't know. Have you noticed a change? They're young. Right. This may not even be relevant, but have you noticed a change in the way that they respond to their getting in trouble since you've changed? Yes. How? How? <clears throat> so when they when they when they really really recognize that they fucked up, and I'm over the situation, it's to the point now where I will tell them like, "Hey, we're getting out of the bathtub," and when they get out of the tub, I help them dry off and like we have a little moment. And when they decide to not listen to me, I put the towel down and I walk away and they want to get upset and they want to start crying. I don't acknowledge it anymore. You know what you just did. We've had conversations about this. They will get themselves out of the tub. They'll come to me and they'll say, I'm sorry, mommy. And I'll say, why are you sorry? Because I didn't listen to you when you told me to get out of the bathtub. I wanted to keep playing. I was like, I appreciate you apologizing. The reason I told you to get out of the tub is you've been in there for 25 minutes. It's time to get out and start getting ready for bed. That there, There's a whole lot of growth in, in a four and five year old kid being able to do that. They do it with amongst themselves now. Yeah. When that's huge. When one of them is being too loud, the other one will be like, hey, sissy, you're too loud. And she'll be like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. 
Um, so he screenshotted something while we were talking about that that says, listening to you guys has made me realize my flaws. I am more accountable than I was a month ago, and I realized that I sabotaged my last relationship. Then it goes on to say, Peaches, you are killing it. Great job. Somebody else said, I'm so fucking proud of her right now. Somebody else said, I uh, feel that in so many ways, and I've been trying to be better. Peaches is hitting deep tonight. Somebody else said, realizing where you are harming yourself and your children, that's hard to accept and change. Somebody else said, I love, I I'm sorry, I would love to get a shirt. We'll have to wait. For, though for uh, it doesn't that was not really um somebody else said i feel that in my soul somebody else said wow holy shit peaches is literally describing the phase of motherhood i'm trying to break right now jen a said get it peaches you're doing great i mean this is making me uncomfortable you hit a lot of fucking <laughs> a lot of people in the chat when you were talking i looked over it was just fucking positivity yeah yeah um jenna said um is uh, i'm sorry this is the accountability a lot of us wish our parents had Bless you. Gabby said, respect you so much for saying that about motherhood, Peaches. I was feeling the same way, and I have been making changes to better myself. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, AJ. <laughs> he hashtag move AJ to Florida so Chris can focus. I love that. And then people started hashtagging <laughs> it. Uh, M Sanchez said, I started watching you guys on 5523. I have started implementing your advice in my marriage on 5524. Um, I will send you an email with an update. I'm already seeing results. Oh, I'm so excited for that update. Started watching you guys on 5-5 five, five of 23. Okay, so in ne next year we'll get an email. Okay, I was so confused just now. Um, I was like, we weren't even podcasting last year. Yeah. It was not last year. Right. It was 2023. Yeah. Um, Paige Kane said, can talk about motherhood working versus staying at home be a side piece. I think some could benefit hearing it from you guys. Did we not do that yet? I don't recall. I feel... I thought we did, which is why I haven't brought that back up I again. I feel like we have. We need to if we haven't, because that would be a damn good side piece. Okay. Uh, What's going to be the side piece? I need another topic, because um, I'm going to have to speak a lot on that. I'm going to have to figure out. Um, can't talk about motherhood working versus staying at home. Okay. Because, I mean, we talked about that a little bit tonight. Yeah. But I, I definitely think that that should be a full-length video. Being a working mom with a partner who is also working and is active in the children's lives can be a very healthy dynamic. Right. It can be just as easy as being a stay at home mom. If you're both doing what you're supposed to be doing, it can, that can be a whole con. That's going to be like a three hour video. Yeah. That, we should do I'm that, not going to shut up about we that. We should do that. Um, Justine said, Chris, you're an amazing ambassador and inspiration. Thank you for sharing the gritty parts of life. I, oh, you're welcome. Um, da, 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 da. Jen a said, I cannot even tell you how much you all have changed my life for the better. Uh, you guys, um, you guys in Discord, Jen A, Zeke, mm -hmm. the other mods that are over there, um, the people that are helping with clips, the men and women's groups, like you guys are affecting our lives just as much as we're affecting yours. Oh yeah, you guys really are. And, and I can't like, we thank you guys a lot. And I know that it, it's just, it seems like gratitude, but like we mean the shit. Oh like, no, like thinking about you guys makes me fucking emotional. Yeah. Because none of this would be a thing if it wasn't for all the people that are helping. Mm-mm. Um, Lisa Ricks sent a four ninety nine chat four ninety four dollars and ninety nine said said that to be fair is from the show letter to Kenny or letter Kenny, pitter patter is another line. Um, I have actually never watched that. Me either. I only know that because I say to be fair a lot, mm -hmm. and my friends used to fuck with me about it, so I had to Google it to find out what the fuck they were talking about. Zach did a a GoFundMe move AJ to Florida thing. And is that it, a legit thing? No, he said this motherfucker faked a GoFundMe, LOL. <laughs> Wait, there's actually a link. I, it, it's not real, though. I'm clicking it. Campaign not found. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not real. I would like to point out that I, I'm at a point right now where if I do this one or two more times, I'm not going to get distracted like I was. Okay. I, I'm, I'm learning... If you look at where the first time we tried to do this, I've got this shit down mm. and like minus the distractions from the sounds, I realized the sounds were making me distracted. I turned fucking sounds off. It's not a distraction anymore. Um, and I, I'm able to move this shit around really well now compared to what I was doing before. I think that I'm on top of shit. So mm. I'm gonna pat myself on the back later. I'll pat your back too. Mm. Oh man. Um, oh, somebody said that, that, that link should have been a Rick roll. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. This fucking food thing sucks. 
All right, let's see. Appreciate you guys. Unfortunately, still getting divorced, but I can now fix myself and be better for whoever comes next in my life, but also for me. Be better for you first. Yep. Worry about that other shit later. Correct. Somebody said, I'm more upset about letter to Kenny than you skipping the Harambe reference in kiddo's email. Uh, I didn't catch a Harambe reference because that whole meme Harambe nonsense mm. fucking annoys the shit out of me. I think yeah. it is the dumbest fucking thing ever. And I don't care how you feel about it. I think that shit is fucking stupid. I think that that gorilla got so much attention on the internet because people are fucking dumb than it should have gotten. Animals get mistreated constantly right. in zoos and animal things and like SeaWorld and even though SeaWorld. Oh yeah, SeaWorld. You, you would think that. I got to do a back, a back like side tour of SeaWorld once. Mm -hmm. They have more backside of SeaWorld than they do front side of SeaWorld. And the, like the conservation efforts that they do and like the animal restoration and like healing dolphins and sea turtles, like they do a fucking lot yeah. for animals that people don't even ever see. They don't even know about it. Right, because they're showing right. an orca right. in a tank for 20 years. Yeah. So there's, I guess, ups and bad. You know, you got to fund this shit somehow. So some are going to suffer so others can live. Maybe I, I don't really know. But the Harambe thing never, never clicked with me. And like, yeah. it was a big thing in the tattoo shops for a while. It just got under my skin. So like, I, that doesn't exist to me. So I, I didn't miss shit. You just expected something of me and I'm not that guy. No, I think I might have missed it. Yeah. Reading. I might have skipped over it. I lose my place a lot in emails. It all becomes just one long page of words. Uh, 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 uh. AJ said, geez, just say you don't need me. Damn, I didn't say that. I'd love to have you down here and make my life way fucking easy. I would literally give you everything on a hard drive and be like, here, go edit. Yeah. You know how much money I've spent trying to make this work with you staying in where you're at and like a lot trying to make these things happen and like diversify and it's a fucking nightmare. All right. Um, does anybody have anything else that's super important? Because we're going to be ending this very soon. We're almost yeah. three hours in and I'm hungry and I would like some some woman time. I got a tinkle. <laughs> Stop. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I had to put the camera oh. on you before I did that so nobody could see it. Oh, man. I mean, I'm down if you are. <laughs> you fucker uh may i say episode nine and ten tore me up i am doing lots of self-reflection and working to becoming whole instead of a shell are we talking about episode nine and ten of the side piece or episode nine and ten of the podcast, podcast. okay dating advice dating advice is going to be one of the side pieces that's coming out we're not going to talk about that when we've done that one now so you guys be prepared for that postpartum depression we've talked about several times in podcast um at the best dating episode is coming. Yeah. I, I think it was a pretty good episode. I it was, I think it. it was really good, yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I did not say anything about golden showers. That's disgusting. <laughs> um He said unleashing his inner R. Kelly. <laughs> You all touched on how you've done between relationships. What steps do you recommend for the process? We just literally had a really long discussion about that. That was like half the live stream. Yeah. Uh, 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 um. When will you be posting the Discord Q and A? Uh, you have to ask AJ about that. AJ, everybody that has questions about when things are coming out that we've recorded, ask AJ because he's the one that schedules all that shit. Actually, that's not true. I've been helping him schedule all that shit, but I don't can I don't commit any of that to memory. So I guess that's a me problem. I found a comment that I wanted to discuss. Go for it. I noticed you do a lot of uh, relationship advice, which is great. But will you do more detailed self-help podcasts soon or have you already? Our whole podcast is self-help. Everything we do, everything we talk about, even though it can be applied in relationships romantically, all of it is rooted on figuring out your shit first. Um, I, I want to know what, what more they would want for self-help. 
Because there's there's enough people on the internet that do that already. Like, right. th- this is like the people that wanted us to make workout videos and shit. Like, I don't see a reason to do that because there's enough people in that space that do that to a, mm-hmm. you know extent. Yeah. Or like, um, it's oversaturated. Right. If you ask me. Right. There's no reason for us to do that. And what we're doing is is our, our niche. Like, it's not being done the way that we're doing it. There mm-hmm. are a lot of people that do relationship shit, and there are a lot of people that do you know life shit. That yeah, they don't look like us though. But they don't do it the way that we're doing it, and that's mm-hmm. what's working for people. Um. I don't know. The dating episode, AJ. When's the dating episode coming out? And when is uh, the Discord quest Q&As coming out? Actually, the Discord Q&As were already released to Discord as a, a as an early release. That's That was posted to Patreon. Was it? I'm almost positive it was. I'm not in charge of that. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it was posted three days ago. And uh, the dating episode was posted three days ago as well. For those of you who are on Patreon. Ooh, that it, that early release. Yep. Coming in for the clutch. Yep. All right, one more thing before we go. In case you guys didn't see. We have more shirts. They say, love is not enough to be a better podcast. Boom. Focus, you piece of shit camera. Um, stickers will be going out with those shirts, possibly some thank yous. Uh, we have some challenge coins that we will be sending out with those shirts. Some of them. Not everybody will get them, but some. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Guys, I, I really, really, really hope that this... Um, this t-shirt thing sells out relatively fast. I would love that. We um we would like to do monthly drops on shirts, mm-hmm. but I, I don't want to do them and sit on them. Like the last run of shirts we did, we still have some sitting. We do. But I also went, we did two shirts instead of one and we went really hard with it. And mm-hmm. I think that moving forward, I, I don't want to do that. I want to do one shirt at a time so that we're not fucking sw- swamping people with shit. So, all right. With that being said, guys, we are done.